playoffs. Um, they should be in a, ranked in the top 20 or 15 in Division Three football this year. They've got 18 starters back from a team that we barely beat by two last year. So we've got our work out, cut out for us today, Dick. One of the things they have is a punishing ground game. John Scott and Olusave, uh, two very, very good running backs. Yeah, and you can't forget about Brad Kirby, their big fullback, who had 827 yards a year ago. So they've got three people. John Scott's got the most speed of them all, but he's 205-pound tailback. And then he, when they, he gets a little bit tired, they'll bring a 228-pound tailback to kind of make you more tired on defense <laughs> and with almost as good a speed. And, and he's a special teams return guy as well. And then they've got uh, can offset that with a fullback or a uh, sophomore quarterback who's a, uh, going to second year as a starter. Uh, Mike Cole um, from Bradley Bourbonnet over there in Illinois does a great job of throwing. So, so they've got a great offense. Your team struggled a little bit in the first half against St. Ambrose and your opener only leading 3 nothing, but really got things going in the second half. What do we look for today? Well, um, I think it was our first ball game. Uh, we had three, uh, four, and sometimes four new starters in the offensive line playing for us. Uh, Sophomore quarterback really starting his first season with us. Uh, had a little bit of impatience in first games, years, etc. We got over that in the first half. The second half they came out and were a lot more poised and uh, did a great job. Offensively with Trevor Bell at fullback, Ozzy Young at tailback, and Nick Browder at quarterback, and Doug Holock, and Michael Tolbert, and Joe Fanolio and Scotty Heinrichs at the wideouts, and Daryl Jackson at tight end. I mean... We've got an arsenal uh, offensively, and, and I've told our players we can be very, if we execute, we can be very lethal offensively. So it, it may be an offensive show today. Maybe it'll be a de the defenses will bone up for the challenge. It'll be a defensive show. But I think that uh, we should score some points today on offense. Coach, best of luck uh, this afternoon. Let's hope for win number two. Okay, thanks a lot, Dick. Coach Tom Horn of the Valparaiso Crusaders back with a play-by-play. After we take this break, you're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. And back we are at uh, Brown Field on the campus of Valparaiso University. Dick Harnon along with our color commentary expert today, the former coach of the Valparaiso Crusaders, Bill Cook. And Bill, welcome to the microphone and uh, look forward to a, to a good ball game this afternoon. Yeah, good to be here, Dick. It's a good day. A little cloudy today, a little rain previous to this right now. But I think we're going to have a good game. Okay, we need to get your mic a little closer, but uh, we're in good shape uh, Milliken and Valparaiso should be a good ball game. Last year, 36-34, and both these teams have very, very potent offenses. It was uh, Donnybrook last year. I enjoyed the ball game thoroughly. It was just who was ahead of when the ball game ended. It could be the same thing this week. Uh, the Big Blue are talking about when the best offensive unit he's had in 19 years. Well, he's got a quarterback that's back for the second year in a row, uh, Mike Cole, who really did a good job. He's got some running backs, Kirby and uh, Scott and Olusave. Uh, who really can pick it up and get it going, but valparaiso has got some too, and Ozzie Young, Trevor Bell, and uh, some of those guys. Yeah, <clears throat> I think the key today is with, if what defense is going to be good enough to make some turnovers in a ball game that can make the difference. We're just about ready to get going with the opening kickoff. Valparaiso will receive as we start the ball game. Ready to uh, approach the football, and there's the kick. Going deep, going to be taken by Young at about the 12 to the 15 to the 20. He's got some room. 25 to the 30 and across the 35 and out to the 38 or 39 yard line. So Valparaiso with great field position to start the ball game all the way out to the 38 yard line. Nice run by Ozzy. Took the ball straight up the field, no cutting to the sidelines, and got as much yardage as he possibly could. We've always found out percentage wise that that was one of the best plays you can get, get that ball straight up the field as fast as you can. Crusaders bring it to the line of scrimmage. Nick Browder's the quarterback. He's got Trevor Bell and Ozzie Young as his running backs behind him. And uh, now we got a little problem with the uh, chains across the way. Looks like it's kinked up a little bit. So the Crusaders will go back in the huddle and regroup. Here's the starting lineup. Holock's the flanker. Jackson the tight end. You got McHale, Elijah, Fitzgerald, Adams, and Lyon across that front line for the Crusaders. In the backfield will be... Nick Browder at quarterback, the sophomore. Joe Fanolio is the wide receiver. Trevor Bell and Ozzie Young are the running backs for the Crusaders to start the ball game. Henrik in as the wide receiver goes out wide to the left side. Holick goes wide to the right. And Browder back in the shotgun. We haven't seen this formation so far. There's the snap, a bad snap. Picked up by Browder in a lot of trouble. Caught and dropped back at about the 31-yard line. Coming in there defensively was Jenkins 
And what was that, 92, and Ryan Smith came in to make the tackle on Browder back at the 31, a loss of seven, but not Browder's fault that time, a bad snap. Defensively, Jenkins, Harris, Edmund, Smith, Hessing, Mulk, and Davis, the front line and the linebackers for Milliken. Defensively in the backfield, Eubanks, Bruce, Yoder, and Zanoni. Browder sets them down. Wide receivers to both sides. The I formation backfield. Nick gives it off to the fullback, and Trevor Bell will carry for a couple of yards off the right side up to about the 33. That's going to be third down and about 15 yards to go. And yeah, they should be fancy. teeing off on us now with third and long. Now that was Nate Bobick who was in there at fullback instead of Trevor Bell. Number 22. Kind of a surprise. So it's third down now, 15. Let's see if Browder will go to the air. We got a pro. Well, we got a slot left here. A straight back fakes. Nick wants to throw. Fires it out here oh, and over the head of Ozzie yeah. Young. Had him out in the flat. Ozzie was going to try to get it up the field on the right side, but Browder a little bit high, and so it goes incomplete. It's going to be fourth down and 15. Not a not a good first series for the Crusaders. Well, they had Ozzie set out here at a wing on that play, and he just came right across the middle coming through there and was. <clears throat> he was in pretty good shape. He just didn't get the pass to him. Van Dam back to punt it away. Paul Van Dam, the six foot, 191 pound freshman. There's the snap and the kick. Line drive. Got to bounce at about the 35. Picked up at about the 31 yard line. Trying to get around the end on the left side and is out of bounds at about the 33. That's number 18, Barry Neal. Good coverage by the Crusaders. Yeah, it was good be coverage first, on yeah. a low kick because usually those low punts can be dangerous. They get a return on those, but we were down there in good shape. So it'll be first down and 10 for Milliken at the 34 yard line as the Big Blues offense comes out. A potent offense. They won last week, shut out Franklin. So they come in uh, with the same record as the Crusaders at 1 0. A quarterback is Mike Cole. Got an I formation backfield, Kirby and uh, Scott. Spins it around, gets it off to the big fullback, Brad Kirby. And Kirby's going to carry it forward for maybe a yard. Might have got two. Well, they're going to give him one to the 35. It'll be second and nine. Nice Snyder come up on that and plowed into the thing. He sure loves his football. He reminds me of a Gary Fensick when he played for the Bears. That's a good app. I hadn't thought about that, but he yeah. does. He just flies around out he, there. Boy, he'd love it. He's always <laughs> looking for somebody to take a piece of. Second down and nine at the 35-yard line for the Big Blue as Cole barks out his signals, goes back, wants to throw, looks. Fires it out. He's got a man nice. wide open. He's got him at the 40, 45, the 50. And then finally is knocked out of bounds across the way at about the 44-yard line. A surprise as they went to the tight end, Cameron Pettis, and Pettis carries it all the way to the Valparaiso 44-yard line. A pickup of 19, make it 21 yards on the play. Slipped right over the sideline and hit him. <clears throat> hit him on a quick hitch over there at just about a yard past the 10-yard marker, and he was wide open. I think the Crusaders caught unaware there. They didn't expect him to didn't throw expect, this early no. in the ball game. They did sure they? didn't. They figured they'd have to stop the run first before they'd throw the ball. Neal is out wide to the right side. Hahn is the wide receiver on the left. As Cole goes back, quick pitch out. He got it to Neal. Neal at the 40 to the 35 yard line. So the big blue. Well, they got a flag down on it. Comes out throwing the football to pick up a nine and flags down, I think, probably a face mask. That's it. He called a face mask. I didn't see it, but I'm not down there. So that's uh, that's a five-yard variety. That's going to move it down to the 30-yard line. An inadvertent face mask against Malparais. It'll be first and 10 at the 30. Apparently, Milliken has come out with the idea that if they stop the run very early, they're going to come out throwing that football, which I don't think the Crusaders were prepared for right away. Kirby and Scott are in the I formation. Neal is wide to the right side and Han wide to the left. Come up, looks like we're in man to man. Cole goes back, he's going to throw again. Rolls, fires out here, and it's. Did he catch it? Nope, hit the ground. A diving catch attempted that time by Pettis, but incomplete. It's going to be second down and 10 at the 30 yard line. Defensively for the Crusaders, Harrington, Culp, Miller, and Palyak across that front. Saul Shahid, Jeff Seymour, Josh Burning, and Tom Cunningham, the linebackers. Andre Murphy and Ronnie Sazone, the corners. 
and Shane Snyder, preseason All-America safety for the Crusaders. Cole goes back, makes the pitch to the outside to nice Scott, job. and LeJohn Scott is caught and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard on the play. Snyder and Pagliak's over there, and also I believe Jeff Seymour might have been on the tackle. Now that's the option that they call that option, but that was pitch all the way. He faked the dive, and he knew he was going to be pitching that football. That quarterback wanted to get rid of it quickly. Of course, if I had a back like LeJohn Scott, I wanted to get into him. <laughs> but the Crusaders had it covered dead. Third down and 11 at the 31-yard line. Wide to the right side is Hahn this time. Neal goes wide left. Big third down play here early in the ball game. Going back under a lot of pressure. Pass steps up. Big there chase being caught. Not oh, there we the are. Oh, we caught. caught by one of the interior linemen. Jimmy Easton made the catch. The center. The ball was... Hit into the air, deflected by Seymour, and then caught by Easton. They got a flag down for an eligible receiver, but I think it's okay because the ball was hit by Seymour. Now there's a and wide Easton receiver. Caught it to the 25, pick up a six. Five, ten, and height is a wide receiver, but 260 is a little <laughs> on the heavy side for a wide receiver. Well, he, won't, he won't catch many of them. Now this will be one day that Easton and his mom and papa won't forget. They remember the day he caught the pass. Well, he picked up six yards six on the yard play. Six-yard gain. So it will be fourth down and five. And Milliken's going to go for it. Cole sets him down, goes straight back, wants to throw, looks out, fires out oh, for the end, in the end zone. He's got, got it. it. No, it's out of oh, bounds. Oh, out of bounds. He's over the end line, so the Crusaders have held. Good defensive play over there on that right side by Andre Murphy to force him off the field, and you can't catch it there. And it was and a well-thrown well, well thrown ball. We had him right in the corner. So the Crusaders will take it over first and ten at the 25-yard line. Dick Harlan and Bill Cook with you from Valparaiso. Today's game sponsored by Harley Snyder Insurance, the Sports Shop, the Foul Ball, Gataway Tours, Express Personnel Services, R.W. Baird and Company, Downtown Valparaiso Business Association, Advertising, Marketing and Promotions, and the United Way. First and ten at the 25. Browder brings him back out, gives it to Ozzie Young. Tries to go off the left side, nothing there. As he is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. So no gain on the play for Ozzie, and somebody is down on the field. I believe that's the center, Evan Fitzgerald, holding his head. As he uh, got his bell rung pretty good, and uh, John Kreider quickly comes in. He'll be playing center. But on the field right now is, uh, is Fitzgerald. And they're looking at the angle, ankle or down in that area yeah. somewhere. So we'll take a break. There's no score in the ball game. 10.49 to go in the first quarter. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. The Purdue Christmas Show, Branson, Missouri, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the Mall of America, the Holland Tulip Festival. Just a few of the attractions visited by Getaway Tours. Getaway Tours is the only touring company in Northwest Indiana that is a registered member of the National Tour Association. So if you're a member of a group that might be interested in an escorted tour for a week or just a day, have Getaway Tours take care of all the details. Call Getaway Tours at 477-4771. For the collector, for the fan, for birthday gifts, anniversaries, Christmas gifts, or any special occasion, it's the foul ball. Larry and Kathy Astrologies invite you to visit. Whether your sport is football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, the Foul Ball has cards, memorabilia, and unique gift ideas. Remember, the Foul Ball, 51 Jefferson, Valparaiso. An overcast day, very, very cool for a Saturday afternoon in uh, the middle of September, but a nice day for football, a little bit of wind blowing, which might cause a little problem as they go from uh, your left to the right on your screen. So they come to the line of scrimmage. It'll be John Kreider in as uh, Fitzgerald goes off, limping on his uh, left ankle, it appears, that they uh, were working on out there. So Evan Fitzgerald out and John Kreider is in. Or Valparaiso, they start the clock, and we're ready to go. Well, it's a good time when you've got a new center in and put a little pressure on them, see if we get a bad snap off the bat. If they line up on them, yeah, we got somebody right over top the center right now. 
Go back in at fullback for Bell as Browder goes back. Swing pass to Young. Young's got some room. He's the 35. He's to the 40. Cuts back to the 45 to the 46. Little swing pass to Ozzie Young, and he picks up 21 on a first down. Quick little swing pass and a nice block out there by the wide receiver. He screened out the first man and enabled him to get out in the open field. Ozzie makes some good moves out there, I'll tell you. He's got those hips and those legs going all the time. So first and 10 at the 46, at to the 47-yard line, so they give him 22 yards on the play for the Crusaders. Browder sets him down again at the 47-yard line. Wide men to both sides. Nick takes the snap, goes straight back. Got a screen, screen. snap There's on the screen. right side to Young, and he falls down immediately at about the 43-yard line. So he's going to lose about four yards. Uh, looks like that field might be a little bit uh, slippery out there, Coach. Well, you know, Milliken did a good job on it. They came through, and I thought that screen was going to be set up well, but they had the other portion of them sitting right on top of that screen out there. They read that well. So it's going to be second down and 14 back at the 43-yard line for the Crusaders. 9.40 to go in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. Holak comes out wide to the left. Henrik will be the slot on the left side. Got twins over here. And uh, Ozzie Young, the wing, also on the left side. Only one man. Now Holak goes in motion. Browder goes back. Wants to throw. Fires it out here. He's got Ooh, Young again. Ozzie and again, down. it's low. And Ozzie... Has to go down low to catch the ball. If he could get the ball to him while he's on his feet, he had a lot of room to run that time. Yeah, they were in a trips formation out here. They had a, a deuce out here, what I call a twin set, and then they had Ozzie setting at the wing, and then they motioned the other man back in to a trips and trying to get the ball to Ozzie so he can run in the open field. Third down and about nine and a half out at the 47, 48 yard line for the Crusaders. Panolio goes wide to the right. Holick goes wide to the left. That's uh, Ozzie Young there on the wing. We're in the shot again. Formation. Yeah, the shot Another here. bad snap, but Browder comes down with it. Now fires it to Young. He's got him. He's going to gain a yard, and that's going to be it. So they're trying very hard to get the football to Ozzie as much as they can, but he's going to be down at about the 49-yard line. We're going to have to start looking upfield. Some other receivers dug that time. It looked like Hullock was wide open. Van Dam comes on to try to punt it away for the Crusaders. There's the snap, the kick, not real deep. Going to be taken by Neal at the 21, trying to get around, and he's caught and dropped. First man in there, number 44, that is for the Crusaders, and uh, that is Matt Glodgen. Well, Glanchen makes the play, and it's going to be first and 10 Milliken. Sam Bernardi, our special teams coach, has to be very pleased up to this point. We have an excellent coverage on both those punts. Down there and contained the whole thing. Excellent first, position. First down and 10 at the 23-yard line for the Milliken Big Blue. Their second possession. They moved it well on their first possession, but on fourth down, came up empty. Cole will set him down. He's got Kirby and Scott in the I formation in motion to the near side. Is Johnson. Gives it straight ahead to Kirby, and the fullback is hit immediately as he tries to come through the line of scrimmage. They're coming There's out with there. the option again. That time they gave the dive play to the fullback. He's going to actually uh, lose almost a yard on the play, make it second down and about 11. Well, second down, 11 yards to go. Neither team been able to run the ball so far. I was so going to say, up the middle, neither team has had any success whatsoever right now. They look strong at the tackles. Well, Miller last week had, what, 12 tackles yeah, for the Crusaders? Great, great ball great game. Great ball game. Cole sets him in the I formation, goes back. He wants to throw, stands in. We're going to throw again. Goes deep, Here got a man is. open. Got oh. Great play. Coming across Shane Snyder to just barely flick it away at the last second. Because they had number 97, Andy Franks, wide open. 97 was wide open. The ball was underthrown, or we would have been in deep doo-doo. It's going to be third and 11 at the 23. Well, so far, uh, Milliken, I think, has surprised the Crusaders. They've been able to get those guys deep in the secondary uh, wide open, which they didn't expect. Then they come out with the idea of throwing the football, too, which I think has surprised the Crusaders. Very early in the game. Cole sets them down, third down, 11 at the 23-yard line. 7.20 to go the first quarter. Cole goes back, There's gets it off to play. Scott, draw play, and he gets it across the 26, out to the 27, maybe the 28. But it's going to be fourth down and long, and Milliken's going to have to give it back. 
Picks up five, make it fourth down and six out at the 28-yard line. The first punt for Milliken, and they're punting with the win. Seven minutes to go in a quarter, so it'll be interesting. Ozzie will go deep. He'll be standing at about the 25-yard line. Ronnie Sazone will stand up at about the 43. So he's uh, short in case there's a short punt. There's the snap. There's the catch. Oh, nice high punt. Not going to go very far, but it's way up there. Gives him plenty of time to cover it. It's going to go dead at about the 41-yard line. So not a real long punt, but very, very high. And no run back. It'll be first and 10. Well, that was an odd ball. He, he, they were punting with the win, and he bought the ball high, and it died like a dead turkey out there. First and 10 at the 42. How's a dead turkey die, anyway? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Slow went, uh, and come yeah. down hard. They never got it to turn over at all. First and 10 at the 41 for the Crusaders. Six and a half minutes to go. No score first quarter. Young comes in motion to the near side. Again into the shotgun. Browder rolls left. A lot of pressure from the backside coming. Browder fires it for Young. Oh, Dives nice catch. catch. But he's out of bounds. Excellent catch, but he had a dive and his feet came out of down out of bounds. A great catch Boy. by Ozzie Young, but he was out of bounds. It goes as incomplete. And they uh, ran over our camera guys, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the right on top of them. <laughs> Excellent be second by and ten. Great concentration on the ball. Well, Tom Horn has decided today he's going to get the ball to Isaac Young as often as possible. He has uh, used him an awful lot here already in this ball game. A great catch. It just didn't uh, just didn't uh, didn't happen. They're telling our guys down on the sideline they got to throw their body in front of that camera. Save the camera. <laughs> What's probably happened is that they figured out that in a man-to-man coverage that Milliken's given right now, they're getting Ozzie on the linebacker rather than the defensive back. So that with his speed, they're going to try to get the ball to him. Hullett comes out wide to the left side. Out wide to the right goes Henrik. Trevor Bell in at fullback. He's the short man. Ozzie Young is the tailback. Nick Browder at quarter. Browder on the option. Turns it up and gets a yard out of it. Maybe a couple. So that's going to be third down and 12. I think we missed a penalty there, Coach. I don't know how we did that. I didn't see it either. I didn't see it. How did we get uh, that? They moved them back five yards at any rate. Now they're back at the 38-yard line where it's going to be Second down and 12, so uh, that pass wouldn't we were have counted so, anyway. We were so entrapped in the catch, I didn't see the flag back <laughs> on the field. So second down and 12. Oh, we tripped coming back. And again, a mix up in the backfield, and Browder goes down back at the 33-yard line. Crusaders uh, really struggling, it seems, with the execution back there. Well, yeah, in the I backfield. hope that's not with the new center in the ball game. See, our starting center got hurt. And perhaps we're having a little trouble with the exchange. Nick was coming out of there, but he didn't have the ball, and he tried to slow up, and that's where he tripped on his feet then. So it's going to be third down 17 up the 33-yard line. Browder brings him up. John Kreider is the center, the shotgun formation. And a bad, another bad snap. Browder... Has to get on it, and down he goes at about the 23, and they're really struggling with the snap on that uh, on that shotgun. So loss of 10 on that is going to be fourth down, 27. Well, we've got a new formation, and we haven't seen before the shotgun formation with the direct snap. And we've got the second string center in there right now, so the, perhaps what's giving us some problems. Van Dam back to punt. He's going to be kicking again to the teeth of a very, very tough win. There's the end, almost blocked, line drive kick. Going to bounce at about the 47, and dead it goes at about the 46, so a short punch. And Milliken's going to have it first and 10 at the 46-yard line, a pretty good field position. So first and 10 for the Big Blue at the 47-yard line. They're going to mark it. Right now, the looks of that flag over there, the wind can be a factor in this ball game. That's a strong wind coming out of the uh, out of the west. Cole comes to the line of scrimmage. He's got Neal going wide right. 
Scott is a slot on the right side, and Johnson is wide out to the left. Only one back behind him. That's the fullback, Kirby. He gives it to him, and Kirby goes straight ahead to about the 44. And we're maintaining it up the middle. Neither team has established anything as of now. So Kirby picks up three yards on the play. It's going to be second down and seven at the 44-yard line for the Big Blue. No score of the ball game. Well, we thought it would be an offensive ball game. Last year was 36-34, and it may still end up being that, but so far the defenses have dominated. Looked like Matt Culp was on the bottom of that pile, the other defensive tackle along with Miller. Cole goes back. Oh, there we are. We're on him. Got oh, him and down he goes. The ball thrown into the ground. Oh, no, but he There didn't is call a receiver it. out in the area somewhere, but yeah. uh, he was wrapped up. Tom Cunningham came in from his linebacker position and uh, blitzed. He didn't and had Cole as he just fired it into the ground. It goes incomplete. It'll be third and seven. Yeah. He did a good job of saving a loss that time by grounding that football. Well, they don't do that on purpose, do they? <laughs> no. <laughs> You never had a quarterback do that. Yeah, never on purpose, no. <laughs> Neal out wide to the right side. Johnson wide to the left. The eye backfield with Kirby and Scott. Cole stands in under pressure. Fires it out here. Incomplete through the hands of Johnson. A flag is down in the area you normally would get holding. Or maybe in a receiver downfield. Holding against Milliken will probably be turned down because it'll be fourth down. That's good. He had the receiver open, but Andre Murphy was right on him. He made contact just as he touched the ball, too, so I, I'd have to give him credit for that, for the drop on the pass. He made excellent contact with him at the same well, time he take, touched the ball. They're going to take the penalty on the hold. I'm a little bit surprised at that, but yeah. because it had been fourth down, but been, it'll make it longer, and I guess you got to trust your defense. Fourth to stop down them. at the 40. So it's going to be fourth down and... 17 back at the 46 yard line. All right, what do we have here now? Murphy's always going to the wide side of the field. 335 to go here in the first quarter. They're still no score in the ball game. Cole going back straight back. Now here's a draw the play. All right, good job. Scott picks up one, so it's going to be fourth down. And 16, and Milliken's going to have to kick it away again. But again, with the wind behind him, it'd be interesting right. to see if he can get the ball to turn over this time. Well, he got the height last time. That was a... Okay, we got Sazone and Ozzie back to receive the punt. So Sazone and Young... We're checking up the wideouts over here. Another he high kick, high ball, still is going anywhere. Young calls fair catch, then away gets away from it. Away the ball takes it. a bounce sideways and goes dead at about the 18-yard line. So the Crusaders will take it over first and 10 at the 18 with 2.47 to go here in the first quarter. Still no score of the ball game. The way that football is coming down on the punt, it looks like it's soaked full of water. It's kind of interesting. He gets the, uh, he gets the nose up. And it never turns no, over. It, it comes down. down. It comes down backwards. Right. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody kick quite like I, that. I didn't either. It looked like the ball's full of lead. Just comes down. So the Crusaders back out. Let's see if they can get their snap problem straightened out. Pollock goes wide to the left side. He's got Bell and Young as the eye backs. Fanolio out wide to the right for Nick Browder. Browder. A quick pitch to Young. Trying to get around the corner. Gets around one man. Cuts it back and gets a couple of yards. Maybe three or four as he gets it across the 20 and out to the 22-yard line. Picks up four. Make it second down about six. Nice cut. So second down about six yards to go for the Crusaders up at the 22. No option on that. Just a straight toss from a pro eye formation. Henrik comes back in the ball game. Holick leaves for the Crusaders. Out wide to the right now in is uh, Michael Tolbert, the six foot, 182 pound sophomore. He and Henrik are the wideouts. Crowder goes straight back, throws a screen out here, and it's hits the ground incomplete. It's going to be third and six. That time, Milliken did a good job against that screen pass. They were keying on Ozzie that time. They had no chance at all. 
The ball was thrown over head and forward, so it's an incomplete forward pass, even though it's behind the line of scrimmage. But Olio back in as Tolbert leaves. Third down and six at the 22-yard line. Dick Harlan and Bill Cook. Brownfield, Valparaiso University, no score in the ball game. Milliken, the Big Blue, and Valparaiso's Crusaders, no score. Router on the, the option. option, pitches it out to yeah. Young, and he slips and falls back at about the 18-yard line, and the field must be a lot wetter than I thought it was. That's the third slip for Ozzy. That's going to be fourth and ten back at the 18-yard line, and the Crusaders are going to have to kick it into that wind again. It's not raining. It did rain a little bit earlier, but certainly not enough that you would think it would make the field this slippery. Too bad we couldn't have got a first down in there and ran it out. At least we'd have been punting with the wind. A new punter in there is uh, Dan Kepke, okay. and he line well, drives he and he'll take it at the 45. That. Tries to get around the corner. He's at the 40 to the 38-yard line, and again, Milliken with great field position, first and 10 at the Crusader 38-yard line. And that's a nice job on a punt return by the receiver. They come up and make sure he catches the ball and get the and go straight up field with it. Too many times he's punt return, but he's going to take off going laterally and lose that advantage. Yeah. Olaslav is in the ball game, and Olaslav had a big, big day last year against Valparaiso. He's in for Scott. He can play for most teams, and a new fullback also in there is number 30. That's uh, Mace Ponce. Cole sets him down. Wide receivers to both sides. Johnson right, Neal left. Quick pitch to Olasov, trying to get around the corner as he comes to the right side. He's in big trouble, and out of bounds he goes. Murphy up well there. Well played also. by Andre Murphy. Murphy's out here in the corner, and they've got a screen on him, and he kept making sure he got contained. And we had excellent pursuit coming from the inside, ran the ball out to the sidelines. That's when the first objection you want to do as a defensive coach. Stretch that play out and run it into the sidelines, and the Crusaders did an excellent job on it that time. Gain of one on the play for Olosov. It'll be second down and nine at the 38-yard line. Kirby again sets him down. Goes back once the quick, quick hit. Pass to Neal, and he's got Neal inside the 30 and down to about the 27. Just a quick look into the wide receiver. Five yards upfield, turn inside and throw the football. Two-step, three-step drop, quick pass. Got 11 for the first down as Neal makes his second catch of the day. Cole, four out of seven, 47 yards here in the first half. Sun's starting to come out. It's about time. Cole looks over the defense of the Crusaders and goes straight back. He wants to throw. He's going to go deep. To the end zone. Oh, incomplete. There we are. And good coverage by Andre one, Murphy. Rod Johnson. He and uh, the defender Murphy got their feet tangled, and down went Johnson. And the coaches across the way would like to have uh, an interference call, but they're not going to get one. So it's going to be second down and ten at the 27. A good crowd on hand across the way from. Davenport and a very good crowd on hand from uh, Valparaiso. They as both the, have uh, a right to the football with Andre with it and as long as he's playing the ball and not playing the receiver on that it's not an interference call. Second down and 10 at the 27. Man comes in motion to the near side. Off to Olasov straight ahead. There's nothing there that time. He's going to get nothing. There is nothing upside so far for the Crusaders. That interior line right now those tackles and the linebackers have that stuffed. Well, neither team has been able to move the football on the ground at all. That's going to be third down and ten, and that's the end of the first quarter. After one, there's no score in the ballgame. Valparaiso nothing, Milliken nothing. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. During any business day, you have to make hundreds of decisions, answer countless phone calls, attend too many meetings, and solve each crisis that spells the end of the world. So isn't it nice to know when you need extra temporary help, you don't have to worry. Just call America's employer, Express Personnel Services. Request the skills you're looking for. Let us handle all the details so you can spend your time doing more important things. 
Indiana 105 is your local Northwest Indiana radio station with local Northwest Indiana news and local Northwest Indiana weather, including exclusive up-to-the-minute color radar reports. Indiana 105 has Jim and Chris in the morning, Phil King in the afternoons, and Steve Witt in the evenings. And we play the best country music in Northwest Indiana. We're your number one country music station, Indiana 105. Second quarter just about to get underway. No score. Dick Harlan and Bill Cook. And coach, uh, first quarter, neither offense could do much. No, but <clears throat> we're talking about two strong ground games, and neither one have made diddly on the ground so far. Ozzie made a little bit on a toss, but up inside, there hasn't been a yard made. Third down and 10 at the 26 yard line for Milliken as we start the second period. Cole. Goes back, wants to throw pumps, wants to go deep. It is intercepted and dropped. Oh! Shane Snyder had his first of the year and was hit by Murphy as they collided and Snyder dropped it. But it's going to be fourth down and 10 at the 26, and I got to believe Milliken will probably go for it or, or try to kick a field goal, one of the two. That's where Shane Snyder is the free safety. They put double coverage on him out there, and he came over from the top, made a nice play on the ball. But like it's both the receiver and Andre Murphy plowed into him at the time and took the ball away. Chuck Fisher is the kicker, or at least that's what we were told. It's uh, we got his number is five, but I think he's number six. It'll be from the 34-yard line, a 44-yard field goal attempt. Oh, hey, got a fumble a on the snap. snap. Another bad snap. Picked and up and down he goes. Oh, there we are. Jerks the ball away, right. and it's recovered up by Milliken. But Valparaiso is going to have it down at the 38-yard line. So a bad snap, and we've seen a lot of that today. And Wilkin couldn't come up with it, so Wilkin ended up being tackled back at the 38. A 12-yard loss on the play, and Valparaiso takes it over first down and 10. And now we also have the wind at our back. The wind has been a pretty – the wind looks strong out there. We have the win to our back, so we'll see if we help our passing game a little bit. Well, let's see what the Crusaders can do with the big break. First and 10 at the 35, 38-yard line, just underway in the second quarter. Trevor Bell's the fullback. Ozzie Young will be the tailback, and I'm not sure what the holdup is here. A referee was over on the sideline talking to somebody. Now he's ready to go, so I guess you can't play without one of those, can you? No. You need the big man in the backfield. You'd like to sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after many times. Browder sets him down, two wide outs to the left. Nick. Well, we're stacked up. Left it on the option, and he is caught and dropped Nothing. behind the line of scrimmage, and the defender took Bell and Browder, and he might have lost the football. Let's see. I think he tried to get it back from Nick Bell, and it came loose. Let's see who's going to be on it. You can see the bottom of the pile there. Looks like a gold helmet's got the football, and they do. So Browder able to get it back. A loss of four yards on the play. It's going to be second down 14. Well, I'll tell you, I'm impressed. Both interior, both defensive lines right now have just taken a running game away from the other team from snap go. They they met them in the backfield that time. They put a defensive surge on that set us back two yards. Well, it's going to be second down 14 at the 34. Browder rushed for 100 yards last week. Right now I got him a minus 24. Yeah, they, got, it. they got to him as fast as we got the ball to him that time. Holick comes in motion to the near side as Browder takes the snap. Goes straight back, wants to throw, stands in. Now steps up, what fires it for Henrik. Flags are down everywhere. I think we're going to have a, maybe a pass interference or a hold because it looked like they grabbed Henrik by the shoulder pad as he went by him. If I saw what I thought I saw. The officials uh, yeah. talking it over, trying to decide if... Uh, Who's going to call which first if we're flagged? Would... Yeah. Holding, Holding against Milliken. Pass interference right. against Milliken. Yeah. Yeah, both Either flags gives you, uh, yeah. Yeah, you take the Yeah. Uh, you take the pass interference to get you an extra five yards. Oh, yes. You both get your first down. So pass interference. And an automatic first down for Valparaiso. So that'll move it up to about the 49-yard line. This is interesting so far. We've got two teams who have established great running games coming into this last year and this year. And this year they can't advance the ball on the ground. They're both going to the air. Manolio into the ball game. Of course, Valparaiso has some uh, really good wide receivers. But uh, the strength of this team, you thought, was Trevor Bell and Isaac Young. 
on the ground, but uh, hasn't been that way so far today. Wind's up here. Ryder sets him down. He flip-flops the tight end, Jackson. Long count. There Nick going the rolls team. left. Yeah. Wants to throw. Stands in. There Fires it, it deep for Fidoli. Oh, intercepted. Oh, intercepted. And out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. Number nine, that Rob is Sazzoni. Rob Sazzoni with came, the interception. Came right in front. He had to wait on it. was not a good pass. We had the receiver on the break down there. It was just a short pass by Nick. That'll be first and 10 for Milliken at the 29-yard line. So, again, the Crusader defense are going to come out and have to get the job done. 13.53 to go in the first half. No score in the ballgame. Mike Cole, the quarterback, he's a six foot, 180 pound sophomore. Johnson goes in motion to the far side. Spins it around, gives it to Olasov, and there's nothing there as nothing. he is killed right in the middle. Number 93 knifing in there for the Crusaders, Adam Zolvinsky, to make the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Zolvinsky does his job, and it's going to be second down and 10 at the 29. 13.30 to go. That sounds like a good German name. <laughs> Cole sets him in the eye. Wide receiver's out left. He goes back. He wants to throw. Turns around. Got a man open in the flat out here and overthrows oh, him. Oh, and he drops it. And he takes a lick from Saul Shahid, intended for number 95, and that is... Uh, Andy Frank, or, Andy, or uh, make that uh, Josh Hunt. Sal Shahid is our crusader back. He's like a strong safety and a place at a tough side of the field. So it's third down. And 10 at the 29-yard line after the interception. So far, Milliken hasn't been able to do anything with it. And they're going right into the teeth of what has turned into a very strong wind. Cole pitches to the outside. Pitch. Olaslav trying to get around the corner. Is hit by one man. Breaks a tackle. And then gets it out across the 30 to the 32. Maybe the 33. But he's going to be far short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down at about six. Yeah, from I can see so far, their option is predetermined. They're either going to give that dive or he's going to come out and fake that pitch. He's going to hit the pitch quickly. You know, after he fakes the dive, he takes about two steps and gets it out to one of those backs. Dukowski, Don Dukowski is the uh, kicker. He's back in punt formation. Ozzie stands at about the 30-yard line, 31-yard line to receive. There's the snap and the kick as they went for it. A very slow, low no kick and goes out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. So only a 33-yard kick. Crusaders will take over first and 10 at their own 33-yard line, looking to get something going offensively. We need to get established. We've got the win with it right now. Plenty of time to go here. We haven't really tried to come out and do much with our option yet. I'd like to see them do, you know, come out and try to do their option like we did last week. At halftime, we'll be talking with the president of Valparaiso University, Dr. Alan Harry. Harry, I guess it is. A Harry. President Harry. And we'll be talking to him at halftime in our uh, segment on Valparaiso University. Nick Browder sets him down at the 33-yard line. Spins. Pro eye left. He tried, cuts pitch. inside one man, trying to get around the corner. Turns on the Jets, 35 to the 40 to the 42-yard line. That was just sheer speed, Coach. I was just going to say, Ozzie did that with all speed. They were out there on a good, and he just made that little hip fake in and turned it to the outside again and, and did well. Going to be second down and a long one just across the 41, short of the 42. Henrik comes in with the play from the sideline. Holick goes out. 12.39 to go yeah, in I the would. first half. No Slip score formation. In the Oh, we got Ozzy up at the wing on the short side of the field again. Trevor Bell, the only running back behind Browder. Now Ozzy goes in motion, motion and somebody moved off the right uh -oh. side. That's Elijah. 54 cost, come across. They say they enticed him. <laughs> that's going to cost him five, make it second and six back at the 37 yard line. Well, neither team that's has weird. really had uh, had a whole lot going offensively. They're looking like they're a little bit out of sync. 
That's and that's what hurts you. You, you. When you finally get something going, you're in good ball. You're in good shape to do something with the football. Now you got second and short, and you make a mental error where it comes off. That's where mental errors and turnovers can kill you in a football game. Browder brings him back to the line of scrimmage. As he's going to be the wing on the or the slot on the right side, wide receivers on both sides. Browder rolls. He wants to throw. Looks. He's got Holick, but didn't see him. Now he's still going to have to run for it. Goes to Ozzie. Got him right to 45. Oh, Ozzie Ozzie's was out standing of bounds, out of bounds. Tom Horn is right on it. He does oh. not like that call. The official is going to say he caught the football but stepped out of bounds on the first step. So the ball will be up at the 43-yard line. It. He was either out of bounds or he wasn't. Well, Ooh. that's the thing. What's the, uh, what's yeah. the problem Why here? the discussion? Either stepped on the sideline oh, or he didn't. Make, uh-oh. Well, we got a uh, legal receiver downfield anyway. <laughs> yeah. So it won't make any difference. An ineligible receiver downfield, so that it's not going to matter anyway. So even though they uh, made the pass, it won't count, and that also will cost them a down. So it's going to be third down. Now and 11 back at the 32-yard line. Well, here we were in a situation where we're sitting with second and two. Now we're sitting with third and 11. Browder brings him to the line of scrimmage as the wind starts to pick up, and now we got flags. Nope, we got the stoppage for some reason. Well, we'll shut the window a little bit here. We're, we're getting everything blown around as it's really picking up out there. Well, this area is called breaking your own back. <laughs> what kind of an effect does a win like this have on the players out there? Well, it doesn't have any effect on the players except for your passers and receivers. That's where your effect. Depending on what kind of ball you throw, it makes a thing. It could have a big thing on a kicking game. Well, I'm not sure what the officials are meeting about. Uh, they're having a... Uh, you can see the flag there. It's really whipping around as the wind has picked up. The sun is back out with some ominous clouds uh, back off to the west and to the north. So I don't know what we're going to get as the day rolls along, but it's a cool day here at Valparaiso University and no score with 11.52 to go. Now the officials, I guess, are done. With, they were they're going to move the football back. It. They're going to move the football back up to the 42, 30, to the 37. Uh, the third and 11, we're going to have, what, third and eight? Well, we got offsetting penalties, I think, is what they're saying now. So we didn't have an ineligible receiver. They were offsetting penalties. Well, then why do we have third down? Well, then they shouldn't have lost the down. You're right. Yeah. So I'm not back sure to what... second down? <laughs> Unless they're saying that the pass now counts, but no. I don't think it should. should it? No. It's offsetting penalties should go back they're to second down. They're still talking it over. So we got a little delay here as the officials try to figure out what they're doing, and uh, here comes the referee back. There's Tom Horn on the sidelines, and it doesn't look like he's happy with whatever they're saying, but he got five yards back, but he did not get the down back. It's going to be third down and uh, six at the 37. We'll have to ask about that one. I'm not sure what that call we get a trips out here to the wide side of the field again. Ozzy at the wing. Browder Ozzie's rolls. Here got go. some room. He wants right. to go deep in the... Receiver broken off. Holick. Buttoned hook at about the 40-yard line, and uh, the ball was oh, thrown deep. And Doug's over somebody. talking to the re- receiver coach right now, Patterson. He saw something, yeah. and he's talking it over big time on that sideline right now. He's saying, I wasn't oh, yeah. supposed to go deep, coach. Right. I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> well, whatever. It's going to be fourth down and six, and the Crusaders are going to have to kick it away. There's Tom well, Horn right we there. We've got a different punter in there now. Maybe we get some height. Let's see what we get with the win with us. Kupke is going to kick it. They got him back here in good shape. Neal stands at about 10, the 25. 20, 30, There's a nice, back about 35. nice snap, nice kick. That's a good punt. Turns over. Neal's going to take it at about the 25. Good coverage, Transfer. good coverage. Get it, get it. All right. Down he good goes job. at about the 30 yard line. Good coverage on that punt again. They spread out on the field. They all played their positions and they. Try to get to the outside, and the contained man was sitting there with pressure coming from the inside. Boy, that's so important for the contained man. Talk contain, contain. That one guy to come suck in and let him get the outside. First and 10, Milliken at their own 30-yard line with 11.34 to go in the first half of play. 
bright sunshine now here at uh, Brown Field, but uh, a lot of clouds still up there. Maybe we can keep some of the sunshine for a while. See if either one of these teams can get their offense on crank. Milliken brings it to the line of scrimmage. The eye backfield, wide outs to both sides. In motion comes Johnson. Cole gives it off to his fullback, Kirby. There's nothing there. He is bent backwards. Got a yard. Inside is nothing. I'll tell you what, Coach. The uh, defensive lines are really dominating this football game. But the inside of both defensive lines have controlled the football. There's no doubt about it. Uh, both defensive tackles and the inside linebackers have been dominant. I got to give him a yard on the play. Make it second down and nine, just across the 31-yard line, maybe near the 32. All right. Now. Paylock's lined up on the tight end. Cole spins, goes again to the fullback. Right. Got some room this time. He's the 40, okay, 45. There we go. 50, 45. There's Shane a break. Snyder All right. Runs him down at about the 36-yard line, and Snyder saves a touchdown. A pickup on the play of 33 yards for Kirby, and it's first and 10 for Milliken. They, they slid that ball off instead of going up into the B gap. They slid the ball off in the C gap between that tackle and end. And I think our outside man playing that ball one on the outside rather than taking a, taking the gap away. First and ten at the 36-yard line for the Big Blue. By far the biggest play of the afternoon so far. Again to Kirby. This okay. time there's nothing there as he surges ahead for one. It's almost unfair to give a kid the ball again after he made a run like that and he let him get his breath back. So that's going to be second down and nine, just short of the 35-yard line for the Milliken Big Blue. Here we got Zalvinsky comes in and out goes Harrington in that defensive line for the Crusaders. Cole with the eye formation. Uh-huh. Wants to throw, fires it over. He's got well, his tight end. There's a dump to the tight end. All right. Wide open over the middle is uh, Cameron Pettis. And Cole got Pettis the football, and oh, he's got down he goes shins. at about the 25, and Shane Snyder dumped him. Yeah. And Pettis that is little, not getting up. There's that little dump pass to the tight end when you do that on the option. You fake that dive back up in there, so you freeze the linebacker and hold him up on the line of scrimmage. Then loop that end just in behind him and pop him with the pass. I heard you before the game talking to Bob Kenny about that, and uh, they really were not expecting him to do much they of that. They said they hadn't done that. Well, they have now, and so, they got the first down. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a break with 9.49 to go in the first half. The score, Valparaiso nothing, Milliken nothing. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. If you're like most business people, you just don't have the time to plan and implement your advertising and marketing plan as you should. That's where advertising, marketing, and promotions can help. For less than the expense of a part-time employee, you can take advantage of over 24 years of advertising and marketing experience. It costs nothing to talk it over. Call Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions at 477-5803 for an appointment. That's Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions, 477-5803. In our hands rests the ability to lift those who have fallen to comfort those who are troubled, to guide those who could be lost. It is the greatest power we hold, and there is no greater way to make it felt than through your united way, working harder than ever to make a lasting impact in the lives of the needy and in the hopes of your entire community. Please support your united way. Pettis going off under his own power. Uh, he's going to be okay. Uh, I think just got a bruised shin probably the way uh, Schneider came in here and got him with a helmet right on the shin. Those hurt. Yes, they do. I'll tell you, those really hurt, those shin bruises. You get a bone bruise on there, and I'll tell you, it's a sea star. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Gives it off to Kirby, the fullback. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and down he goes. No gain on the play. And John Paliak okay. is in there. Paliak with the tackle, make it second down and ten. That's the guy you were just watching. Uh, I yeah, I told you on that other run. I think John took that outside responsibility. He's got that C gap. He didn't, but he made sure he took it that time. Paliak knocks him down at the 25. Second down and ten, maybe ten and a half. 
They call him the stud. He's big. Hey, he's got big, he's got uh, good speed, and he's got a good head on him. 6'2", 230. There's the pitch to the outside to Scott. Trying to get around the corner is caught nice a drop. Nice job again by Shaheen Andre Forster. Ware again. The, uh, I see why they got him to the strong side. He did an excellent job again of playing that sweep. Pick up a two, make it third down and eight at the 23-yard line as Murphy came up to make the tackle, but Shahid is the guy that forced him to the outside. Strung it out. It takes more than one usually on oh, plays yeah. like that. One guy's got to contain that ball, and you got to get that pursuit coming from the inside. That's why defense is only as good as its pursuit. Johnson wide to the right side, Neal wide to the left. Third and eight. Fires it over there. He's well, got Neal at the five again. at the four. And only a shoestring tackle kept him from scoring a pickup. Uh, make it the nine-yard line, a 14-yard pickup, but it's first down and goal. That's a, it's just a simple, basic pass play. It's just a quick look in pass. It's only a two, three-step drop and fire the football. They know it's going to go to. We've got to get some inside front coverage on that. First down and goal, Milliken at the nine-yard line. Eight minutes to go here in the first half. First time either team has seriously threatened the other's goal line. Hahn is out wide to the right. Neal out wide to the left. Spence gives it to Scott straight ahead, and he's going to have it down near the six-yard line. LeJean Scott with a pickup of about three on the play. Let's see if they give him the five. No, they're going to mark it near the six. It'll be second and goal. They're looking strong inside. Yeah, they did give him the five, so give him four yards on the play. It's second and goal at the five. Scott with only 11 yards on five carries unofficially in the first half. So right. Alfred has contained him pretty well so far. Cole sets him down at the five. Gets it to Scott again, caught behind the line of scrimmage, and then stood up. Halyak was one of them in there, grabbed him from behind. Also 98 getting the pressure from the uh, inside. That's Art Moline. John came across and made the first hit up behind the line of scrimmage there. Also number no gain on the plate. Third down and goal at the five. That was Ronnie Sanzone. That was our crusader. We must have had him on going on a blitz. Come from the outside over here. Made that contact behind the line of scrimmage. Third down, goal to go for the big blue is Cole. Spin. There's wants to throw. Oh, oh, and we got him. Drop. Back we're going. at about the 10-yard line, a loss of five on the play, and it's going to be fourth and goal. They're going to have to try the field goal. And they were going right back for that quick looking again. Exactly that. Quick five yards and turn in. Well, they tried this earlier, and it didn't work out very well. Number six on Chuck Fisher, a 5'10", 175-pounder, will try the field goal. This time it's going to be from the 27-yard field goal attempt from the 17-yard line. Snap is down, the kick is up, and it is good. So Fisher scores with 5.48 to go in the first half. It is 3-0 Milliken. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. Have you visited downtown Valparaiso lately? You'll find a great selection of unique products and services available. Everything from hiking and outdoor equipment to scuba gear, men's clothing, to stylish women's fashions. Comfortable footwear for the sportsman to delicious food and drink at our many restaurants. In short, just about everything you need is in downtown Valparaiso. Visit us soon. This invitation from the Downtown Valparaiso Business Association. Come visit us in downtown Valparaiso. You'll be glad you did. Of the thousands of investments available today, some of the most exciting are right here in the Midwest. Where do you get research and advice on them? Many Wall Street firms overlook these corporations. But Robert W. Baird & Company has an international reputation for research, and Baird closely tracks these and 300 other corporations, publishing their recommendations in timely research reports. For more information on what Baird Research can do for you, call Baird in Valparaiso at 464-4906. Baird. Better results from better research. The seven yard line, east of the 10 to the 15, east of the 20, he's got some room, 25 to the outside of 30, 35 to 40, 45, the 50, and out of bounds at about the 41 yard line. 
Well, while we were away, Coach, you were saying we need a good return. I guess they got one. And we got it. Boy, Ozzy did a good job. He got the ball upfield, cut it to the outside. He did all the fundamentals right. We got to that right side, and he switched that ball over the right hand and tucked it away. So let's see if the Crusaders can take advantage. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. 5.38 to go first half. Milliken leading it 3-0. Crusaders. Why he's one of the premier backs in the Pioneer Conference. Browder sets him down the I backfield with Bell and Young. Gets it off. Trevor Bell straight ahead to the 40 to the 37 yard line. Trevor Bell carries the football. And he carried, five. carried about three linemen for two yards there, too. Well, that's going to be second and five at the 37. First carry of the day for Trevor, I have, unofficially. Last year, Trevor had an outstanding ball game against Milliken. In fact, he was our leading ground game. I believe he, he broke like, he, what, a 64-yarder or something right. like that on him. But you don't get from the fullback that often. Second down and five at the 37-yard line for the Crusaders. Nick Browder barks out the signals, looks over the defense. Got a man jumping around, goes back, gives it off to Young. And Ozzie is straight ahead, gets it to the 35-yard line. I don't see any flags out there, although there were a lot of people moving around. Pick up a two, make it third down and three at the 35. Well, we got a third and four situation. We're taking the ball on the ground right now. Well, the Crusaders have not been able to get anything down the field in the end zone. Let's see what they try here. Wide to the left side, Fanolio's the slot. Holock is the wide receiver. Bell and Young behind Browder. Now they flip-flop the tight end. Jackson moves off to the left side. Browder, quick pitch out quick to Young. Toss. Young tries to catch oh. it and turn it inside, and he slips and falls down at the 35. And again, nothing there. It's going to be fourth down and three. That's just a quick toss to Oz. We had everything going to the left side, but it looked like he lost his footing again. Yeah, it's, he tried to turn it upfield. And I, you look out there, Coach, and the, the middle field's kind of chewed up. I'm not sure exactly why that is. It shouldn't be that bad, I wouldn't think. The weather hasn't been that bad. No, we had this, that field, much rain. this field drains excellently. It's, uh, it, it's, it's one of the best rain summer. fields around. Fourth down and three at the 35. They're going to go for it. Jackson flip-flops to the right. Young goes in motion. Well, we've got a trip situation to the right. In fact, we got four receivers to the right side. There we go. Goes for Holock, and he overthrows him. Oh. Intended for Doug Holock, but he overthrew him, and it's going to be... Milliken football first and 10 at the Valparaiso 35 yard line. Yeah, it looks like Nick should have taken my advice this summer. I told him when he goes home in the summer, I had him in a weight training class and he should be throwing the football and he said he couldn't find any receivers. I said, hell, I said, call the mayor of Waukegan. I said, the mayor of Waukegan played a defense, offensive end for us on our undefeated team, Hank Parvonian. I said, he'll go out and catch him for you. Third and 20, or 320, I should say, to go in the first half. First and 10 at the 35-yard line for Milliken. They lead it 3-0. Spins, hands off to Kirby, the fullback. He's going to have a couple of yards, and that's going to be all. At halftime, stay with us. We'll be talking with President of Alfredo University, Dr. Alan Hari. As we move near the three-minute mark here in the first half. Three-nothing, Milliken on top. What we yeah. thought would be an, an offensive game has been a defensive game. They've got nothing inside today, but they ran that one-off tackle, and it helped set them up in their efforts to make that three, make a difference in the ball game right now, though three to nothing. Cole barks out his signal. Spins, gives it again to the fullback. He goes straight ahead, and he stood up as he gets it out to about the 40. That's third down and five at the 40-yard line. Looks like they're going to be content to try to get a just try to get a first down, keep the ball on the ground, and let the crack run out so we don't give us the ball with the wind again. So it's going to be third down and five at the 40-yard line for the Crusaders. Clock runs with 2:10 to go in the first half. Yeah, let's see. Is he going to know? 15's out to the right. Got men wide to the right side, the eye backfield. In the slot right. Cole goes back and wants to throw a flag, goes down, fires it out here, and it's too high. Tended for Johnson, but way too high, but a flag is down. Somebody was moving around. 
on the right flag. Flag down. Hope we don't have a holding. Backfield in motion against Milliken is declined, so it goes incomplete. And it's going to be fourth down and five at the 40-yard line. So the Crusaders are going to get it back with about a minute 50 to go in this first half. Ozzy goes back to receive the okay, punt. This looks like a good effort. It's because Kamikaze. We got one single safety back here right now. We're coming up here. I think we're going to get a punt rush. Take Delkowski a look. Back yeah, in we punt got formation. ten people on the line. We're coming. They're coming. Watch it. Oh, we got a call. Flags are down, and let's see. Uh, it's got to be, I think, against uh, Milliken. The Crusaders are applauding. I think he ran out of illegal procedure. So that's going to move it back to the 35. It's going to be fourth down and 10, but that's really academic. I think it was intimidation that time. We had 10 people up on the line, and I think they know they're going to come. Well, they got them up there again. Yep. And we're coming. And he gets it away. And it's going to go out of bounds at about the 32-yard line, and that's where they're going to mark it. So the Crusaders will be first down and 10, 68 yards away. Trailing 3-0 with a minute 48 to go here in the first half. Tom Horn talking to Nick Browder on the sideline and trying to figure out what they can do to come up with something here. You need a big a big play. But the one thing you don't want, Coach, is to turn it over here. Make no, you sure you don't go in any worse than you are right now. We got the win. We're in a pretty good field position right now on the 30-some yard line. First, he come out from the first play and see if we can establish something on the run right now. First and ten at the 32-yard line. The Browder's got trips out wide left. In motion Ozzie is at holding. The wing. Watch him. He's going to send Ozzy out wide. There he is. Oh. Well, Enough. he caught and oh. dropped. Number 77 in there is Tony Edmonds for Milliken. And Browder is down at the 27-yard line. A loss of five. Make it second and 15. Big blue line of Milliken right now. That defensive line is doing an excellent job. Browder sets him down quickly with no huddle. Go. Goes back, wants to throw, stands in, fires it out, and oh, Jackson Darryl can't catch it a little ball. bit behind him. And it's going to be third down 15 at the 27. That time we gave you a Nick time to throw the football, and but he threw it just a little bit behind Daryl. Fourth Wasn't down. Able to hold on to it. Make it uh, third down and 15 at the 27 yard line. Browder unofficially four out of seven for 27 yards here in this first half. Hollick goes wide to the right side, and Henrik goes out wide to the left. Well, we're in that short punt again. A uh, bad snap again, but Browder's able to run it down. He's under a lot of pressure and going to have to throw it away. And they're looking down, and, uh, yeah, they see Holick there, so they say, okay. But Nick did the right thing. He got rid of the football. It's going to be fourth down 15. I think they were trying to set up a screen as fast as everybody got in there, but uh, there was nothing there. But we have a flag down back at about the 40-yard line. I'm Are not they sure talking what over where they're going to call it? No. I thought they might be talking about an intentional grounding, but. Well, they're talking it over again. Seems like the officials are going to pick it up. Officials have had to talk it over just about every yeah. call, it seems like, for some reason. <laughs> Not sure what that's all about. So back in punt formation goes Kepke again. Neil will stand at about the 35-yard line with a minute eight to go in the first half. Third, three to nothing in favor of Milliken. There's the snap and the kick. Ooh. Got it away. Nice kick. There's oh, a what beauty. a beautiful kick. There's a beauty. Oh, it gives me a nice about job. The 20-yard line comes down the left right, side and is in big on. trouble and out of bounds. All right. A great kick by Kupke. And a good kick, good, re good reception by that tailback back there, taking it over his shoulder, too. Or if he'd have let that thing hit the ground, it might have that. gone dead at about the one the way it was Right, going. it was going. So Milliken will have it first and 10 at the 29-yard line, and you would expect they would try to maybe run out the clock and get in the locker room with that 3-0 advantage, but we'll see. 
We didn't expect them to throw the ball as much as they have already here in this first half. Mike Cole, the quarterback. Oh, I think they're going to be tickled to walk into the locker room with a three to nothing right now. Yeah, with Johnson, that wind, I don't believe they'll be throwing the football. Johnson and Neal out wide to the left side. Spins it around, gets to his fullback, Kirby, and yeah. just fights ahead to the 32. Picks up three. It's going to be second down and seven. And Valparaiso is going to call a timeout. So the Crusaders decide to stop the clock with 49 seconds to go, try to turn something over here if they can, and uh, get themselves on the scoreboard if it's possible at this point. But uh, right now they're trailing three to nothing and kind of a really surprising first half, Coach. I think uh, we all expected an offensive display by both teams. And we're getting and the defense to happened. stand up, right. That's about what happens most times when you're talking about it. Both in uh, both lines so far have the defensive lines have played great ball. They're taking away the pass. They're putting pressure on the passer, and they've taken away the run. Well, the uh, it'll be interesting. We'll uh, see what the two offensive co- teams can come up with for the second half because uh, neither one of them has had much success doing much of anything. I don't had one really Millican. big play. Yeah, I don't look for Milliken here to do anything more than, than run the football. At least, not until it, uh, well, right now they've got nothing. Second and eight. They're going to run that clock. Cole sets him down. Spins. Gives it straight Inside ahead to again. the fullback again. Kirby up to the 35 yard line. Pick up a three on the play. And it's going to be third down and four at the 35. So third down, four yards to go at the 35, and Valparaiso again is going to call a timeout. Again, uh, hoping to get the ball back at least with a little bit of time, and maybe they get a run back from uh, Ozzie on a punt situation. Absolutely. They'll be, and they'll be going for the rush again on it right now, see if they can block a punt. It takes, I'll tell you one thing, you line up ten men, you know they're going to come. But it takes a lot of guts to throw that football down there with, if you're going to yeah. be doing it for that guy to stand back there and do it. So that's what they're trying to set up right now, to make them get in a punt situation, see if he can block a punt, take mm-hmm. it in for a touchdown. See. That happens so many times if you get the block because you're all that way and the other team's upfield. That's a likelihood. let see defensive coordinator and uh, assistant head coach Bob Kenny talking to his three there's nothing Defenders. more demoralizing to a team, too, if you can block a punt. I don't know. Psychologically, it has as much to do to help a team but to get back into a ball game as the score does. Here they come. Neal out wide to the left. Johnson goes out wide to the right. The eye backfield with Kirby and Scott. 18's out here. They've hit him in that quick look in, but I don't look for it. There it is. Yeah, no, goes back to the inside. Back. Oh, and they got him. And he's going to have the first he got the first down. down. So Kirby with the first Brother, down picks what a up time six. To give him that. And it's going to be first and ten at the 41-yard line, and uh, that. I think that might be their second first down from a run in the whole first half. They haven't had that many. was a big one for them. Well, they'll be able to run out the clock now with 30 seconds to go. The Crusaders took a chance calling some timeouts but couldn't hold them back. So it's going to be first down and ten. I have Scott now with 47 yards on eight carries. By far the leading ground gainer in the game. Yeah. There haven't been many. Straight ahead again, Kirby on the right side, got a yard. Stacked up at the 42, maybe the 43. That's probably our couple. last play of the half. Well, we got the... <laughs> Milliken, Milliken called a time. I don't understand that one. With eight seconds to go, why would they want a timeout? Well, out? you know what they're going to do now? They're going to throw a the ball. They figure they got the blast play. Nothing can happen with it, so I think they're going to throw one. Yeah, go deep one time and see what happens, yeah, right? right. Well, we'll see it. The, uh, seconds ago, they figured it'd be the last play of the ball game. They might toss it up. See what's happening, Mike Cole. I don't see Cole. any other reason to take a timeout at that position in the game. Cole comes back to the uh, huddle after being to the sideline, and we'll see if that's what they're going to do or not. Shane Snyder and uh, Jeff Seymour had been over talking to Bob Kenny, and I'm sure he's thinking the same thing, that he's probably going to have him play a little bit deeper and uh, just try to keep everything in front of you. Right. So we'll see. We have eight seconds. One more play to go here in the first half. Milliken on top, 3 nothing. 
It's been a good first half, uh, although we haven't seen a lot of offense, but the defense is a very play well. Yeah, they're spreading out. So here we got a deuce over here. We got a deuce over there. Single back in the backfield. Double wing. Slot over, slot to the left side. They're going to throw it. Well, oh, and he gets it to him upside, trying to spread him out. All right. Kirby picks up right. two, and that's going to be the end of the first half of play as the Millican Big Blue lead the Valparaiso Crusaders at halftime by the score of three to nothing. They had the same idea. They gave him a, gave him a wide formation both sides with a slot on the left and a, and a deuce on the right and then tried to run the trap up the middle. Well, that's, out the defense. that's the end of the first half with the score. Millican three and Valparaiso nothing. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. As an auto owner's insurance agent, I take your needs seriously and work hard to find you the best coverage available. As an independent agent, I'm able to provide you with the policies and coverage best suited to your individual needs. You see, auto owners selects agents the same way you do, with a great deal of care. For the best coverage at reasonable rates, call your independent auto owner's agent today. Call your auto owner's agent, Harley Snyder Insurance, with offices in Valparaiso, Chesterton, and Portage. Put a sock in it. That's right, put a sock in it. As you head back to school this fall, the weather's bound to cool off. So if you want to keep wearing your comfortable Birkenstocks, take our advice. Put a sock in it. Birkenstock, the comfort shoe, available at the sports shop, 60 Lincoln Way in Valparaiso. Birkenstock in six different styles and an assortment of colors sure to please. The sports shop, 60 Lincoln Way, downtown Valparaiso. Valparaiso Crusaders by the score of three to nothing, and our guest at halftime is the president of Valparaiso University, Dr. Alan Hari, and uh, quite a day for football. It's an interesting day, the, the weather, the wind swirling, and sun, and then clouds, it, but it's cool. It's cool. At least we're not going to we're not going to have to worry too much about uh, dehydration or anything like that. Uh, before we talk a little bit about the university, let's talk about the football game. Uh, kind of a surprise. Everybody expected a big offensive display. It hasn't been that way. No, neither team can run the ball, and until the quarterbacks establish the fact that they can hit their receivers, uh, everybody's loading up for the run, and, and it's being stopped, both sides. One of the things that you have to be proud of, I would think, as a president of the university, is the growth of the athletic program here at Valparaiso University. The basketball team last year, the best football record that uh, we'd had in uh, several years last year. It looks like going to be a good one this year. The, everybody's excited about men's basketball, and the other sports are starting to come around, too. Y yes, uh, clearly the 15 years or whatever it's been since we've been in Division One, we're slowly building the programs. It takes time. It's got to be difficult for a school this size to compete in Division One. Uh, yes, it is, and there's a lot of discussion on campus at all times about uh, the wisdom or the lack of wisdom of comp competing in Division One. but we really are a quality school, and a lot of people argue that as a quality school, we ought to be playing the, in the highest quality athletic uh, division, that's Division One. Um, other people, of course, say it's a, it's a very expensive operation. So you get, you get both sides of the argument, and we, we listen very carefully. At this stage of the game, the board of directors are so committed to the idea of Division One. What about the rest of the university? Of course, as you mentioned, Valparaiso is uh, is known as an elite college as far as uh, as academics is concerned. Yeah, yes, and we were very, very pleased uh, yesterday to find out that U.S. News & World Report in the issue that will hit the newsstands on Monday has ranked BU number one in the Midwest this year. So we've moved up from number two to number one, and we're very pleased about that. Uh, we think that that reflects the quality of our place. And as one looks at the data, as, as is printed on that sheet of paper, it's clear that the university has a lot to be proud of. And, and I certainly am pleased to be able to function as the CEO of the institution. In a town this size and a university the size of Valparaiso University, it's quite an achievement. Yes, and, and I keep uh, saying, because I sincerely mean this, that uh, I believe that, that uh, our best interests and North and West Indiana's best interests are really tied together. And we want to be a good uh, citizen in this area, and, and we certainly appreciate all the long-term support that the university has received from Northwest Indiana. Well, we thank you very much for stopping by and talking to us at halftime today. Let's let's hope the second half straightens out. I sure hope so. <laughs> I'd like to score about 15 or 20 points at least. Okay, thank you. Dr. Alan Hari, president of Valparaiso University, our guest at halftime. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. The Purdue Christmas Show, Branson, Missouri, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the Mall of America, the Holland Tulip Festival. 
just a few of the attractions visited by Getaway Tours. Getaway Tours is the only touring company in Northwest Indiana that is a registered member of the National Tour Association. So if you're a member of a group that might be interested in an escorted tour for a week or just a day, have Getaway Tours take care of all the details. Call Getaway Tours at 477-4771. For the collector, for the fan, for birthday gifts, anniversaries, Christmas gifts, or any special occasion, it's the Foul Ball. Larry and Kathy Astrologies invite you to visit. Whether your sport is football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, the Foul Ball has cards, memorabilia, and unique gift ideas. Remember, the Foul Ball, 51 Jefferson, Valparaiso. Third quarter just about ready to get underway. Dick Harlan, Bill Cook from Brownfield, Valparaiso University, where at halftime Milliken leads it 3 0. Official stats have been handed to his coach, and when you look at the first half, Milliken 57 yards rushing, 73 passing. Valparaiso 24 passing, a minus 5 rushing. Not what we expected from either ball club. Not at all. We're expecting an offensive display, and we see a defensive standout ball game on both sides. There's a I kick. I do something to do with it. Oh, there we go. Olesev takes it at about the three, straight up the middle, breaks one tackle, breaks another, still on his feet, and gets it out to about the 25-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for Milliken as we start the third quarter. Milliken leading it 3 nothing. Guess we can make one observation at this time since both teams run the option. They, they both know how to defense it well. <laughs> <laughs> it's done it so far anyway. So it'll be first and 10 Milliken at the 25-yard line. Leading rusher in that first half, Brian Kirby, uh, 14 carries, 57 yards. The only guy really having a, much of a day on the ground at all. Johnson comes in motion in there. Give it off to Kirby straight ahead, and he's going to get a few yards out near the 29-yard line. Pickup of about four on the play, make it second down and six. Or most of Kirby's yardage came on that one play when he went for 35. Yeah, 32, 35 yard run, right. Well, Milliken in the third quarter has a little advantage. They've got the football, they're going into the wind, but that means in the fourth quarter they have the wind at their back, at a, which could be a crucial time in this ball game when uh, perhaps Valpo will need to be throwing the football. They'll have the wind in their face. Again, give it off to Kirby. There's nothing there. He gets it to the 30, maybe the 31-yard line as he is stacked up by the middle of that defense. On the bottom of that pile is uh, number 60. That's Matt Culp, the 5'11", 224-pound sophomore. Give him two yards, make it third down and four. Well, <clears throat> Just underway in the third quarter, 3 nothing. Milliken on top. Third down, four at the 31-yard line. Let's see if they'll go up, try to throw it here on third down. There's that little hitch pass just at the first down, Mark. Well, St. Ambrose was able to make that same pass work uh, yeah. very well to uh, Pavich, and uh, it's still uh, it's still there against Valparaiso. And they had uh, two defenders out there. One's got to take that fun away on them. All he does is go across the, the first down marker, turn around, and then get the quick throw to him. Fourth catch by Neal in the ball game. And a first down for Milliken, first and 10 up at the 37. Flip flop the tight end this time. Cole straight ahead to the fullback to Kirby, breaks the tackle, and then gets it out for about five up to about the 47 yard line or the 40. Two-yard line, I should say. So he picks up five, make it second down, and about five to go. Kirby's starting to make a little. They're starting to make some uh, off the tackle now. Instead of running inside that guard, looks like they're going off the tackle now, and they're having a little more success than they did in the first half. Art Moline comes in. He's a little bit bigger than Culp, 272 pounds. Culp is 224. Let's see if he can help in the middle there. With a little bit more size, a little bit more bulk for the Crusaders. Again, gives it to the fullback. He slants this time and gets it up to about the 45-yard line where Shane Snyder able to bring him down. Going to give him the 46, make it third down and a yard as he picks up four. 
Well, they're 12 20 to go, third quarter. Milliken on top, three to nothing over the Valparaiso Crusaders. Milliken seems to be establishing something on the ground right now. If they get the ground game going along with the pass, and especially going in the wind, it's going to make it difficult on us. Third down a yard to go. Big down. On the, option, on the option, nothing option there. They get him. Saul Shahid and Shane Snyder come in, and Snyder. Looks like he might have pulled a groin. A loss on the play of a couple of yards. It's going to be fourth down and three as Snyder came off. I think that was one of those where Cosby says, don't touch yourself, you're on TV. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dolkowski back to punt. There's flags everywhere. It looks like somebody from uh, Milliken moved. No matter what happens, grab your head. Yeah. <laughs> Eleven twenty-six to go, third quarter, three nothing, Milliken. Illegal procedure. That'll put it back to the thirty-nine. Where it'll be fourth down and eight. All right. So it's going to be third down and eight, or fourth down and eight. So I have to kick it away again. Donkowski drops back. They're doing the same thing we did ourselves in the first half. Stop our own drives offensively with mistakes. Ozzie stands at about the 19 to receive it. Sazone up a little farther. There's a kick. It's a high kick. Going to be way short. Real short. They get away from it. Takes a Millican roll. Sazone fields it at the 30, then gets ground. And down he goes. He uh, lost yardage. Flag is down. And that's going to be against Valparaiso, apparently. Unfortunately, on most kicks, the flags against the offensive team, the blocking. Well, especially since it didn't do any good. Yeah. Well, they caught a delay a game. What would that would be? Oh. How could they have delayed? <laughs> Unless somebody took the football, wouldn't give it back. Well, it's going to be down to the it's 27, and that's where the Crusaders will take it over. I have no idea either. I hear the announcer from Milliken saying the same thing. He's not even going to try to figure that one out. I don't either. First and 10, Valparaiso at the 27, make it to 26 yard line as they move it back another yard. First down and 10. Browder at quarterback sets him down. He's got two wideouts to the right. Is it ahead to Trevor Bell? Breaks a tackle, breaks another to the 30, maybe the 31 yard line. So Trevor picks up four on the play. It's going to be second down and six. It looks like both teams determined, Coach, uh, here to early. They come up in the, the middle. Half. Well, we, they come up at the least middle. they've both done something. They've both come out to go up the middle, and they've both been making three to four yards on it. So it's we, second uh, down and six. Hollick goes wide to the left side, and Henrik goes start into getting the slot on the left. Six. No, right. <laughs> Jackson flipped Good advice. Blocks. Bell again. Ooh, there's a stop. Trevor is hit as he gets it up to about the 32 yard line. On the bottom of that pile is number 54. That's Todd Harris. Also in there is Boger Hessing, the linebacker. Linebacker, yeah. Good stuff. You like that smash mouth, as they yeah, call it, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's I'm an old linebacker. I like that. All right, what are we going to get here? Third down and four at the 32. We're getting a pro set. They're in a man defense. Pitches out to Young. Young's got some room around the corner at the 35 and out the 36. Maybe the 37-yard line, close to a late hit on the sideline. I think we got a first down. Number 29 took him out. That's Mike Bruce, the quarterback. But a first down for the Crusaders. Pick up a six on the play. First and ten for Valparaiso as they try to get something going here in the second half. Trailing 3 0, 945 to go in the third period. Twins. An overcast, chilly day here at uh, Brownfield. Browder on the option, rolls left, wants to throw, stands, 
Fires Hendrick. He's got him at the 45-46 yard line in Milliken territory. Nice catch by Hendricks. They threw the low ball. They come down and scooped it into his stomach and held it in. He did a good job. 16-yard pickup makes it first down and 10. First completion by Hendrick since the first quarter. Kept the tight end in, rolled out to that strong side, gave a lot of blocking, so we had time to throw the football. Good effort. Well, first and 10 at the 46 as it really gets dark here as the clouds roll over. The temperature goes down. There's Bell straight ahead, and Nick gets a yard. Or make that Trevor, not Nick. Nick Bell plays pro football. Well, I think part of the darkness comes from the fact that the windows are so dirty, I don't think they washed them <laughs> since I was coaching. We could maybe do some investing in Windex here. You know? <laughs> we'll have to bring our own bottle next week. Second down and nine. Next week, the Crusaders will host Kalamazoo, and we'll have that for you here on cable TV, either on Multimedia's Channel 23 or U.S. Cable's Channel 16, whichever you're watching us on. We Ooh. appreciate it, and one of the linemen jumped after the defensive man had uh, flinched. Got the left tackle to jump, I believe, John Lyons. John maybe. Lyons. That's John had an interesting summer. He had to miss a lot of the preseason camp because he was uh, petting a little bit of dog, and he jumped up and bit him in the tip of his nose. Gave him a severe wound. He had to have a little plastic surgery done to it. Tip of his nose? Tip of his nose, yeah. <laughs> yeah he lost. It sounds it. funny. I guess it's not. No, no <laughs> not for him. He had to miss about two weeks of the preseason camp. Ball it happened the just before line. they come in. Second down and 14 at the 50. For the Crusaders, Browder goes back, fakes to Young, under a lot of pressure, wants the screen pass, now rolls right, gets away from one man, looks for somebody, tries to get around the corner, and out of bounds he goes at about the 45. He's going to lose six yards at the 44 they're going to mark it. And again, the Crusaders are going backwards after having a pretty good drive started. We're always getting some pressure in our face, making them roll out the pocket. Third down and 20 back at their own 44-yard line. This had gotten to the 46 of Milliken, but now they're back at their own territory at the 44, where it's going to be tough. Third down and 20. Well, let's see what Browder can come up with here. They're coming. Stands in, fires it for Holock, tipped up oh. the air and intercepted. Tipped up and caught by great tip and interception by number 40, Boger Hessing for Milliken. So the Big Blue is going to have it just shy of the 50 yard line, first down and 10. Second interception of the day for Milliken, and that time Hessing did a great job a nice of tipping play. it straight up. Nice play. He got up, hands up in the air, tipped up the ball, and then he was able to swing his body around and make the catch. Linebacker's dream. Crusaders defense going to have to do the job again. Cole pitches. All of a sudden, he the throw. Back. Fires got a man wide open. Got him. got him. Neal at the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Olasov with the halfback option files to Neal. All the way down to the 9-yard line, a 41-yard pickup, first down and goal. He get his option on that pass. We had two men deep and open that time, too. That so little Olisov flip to Neal. Held up our whole secondary. First and goal at the nine for Milliken. Cole will set him down. Hahn comes in motion to the near side. Spins, pullback, Kirby. Gets away from the first man and dives near the five-yard line. Josh Burning had him behind the line of scrimmage, made a dive in there, but then lost it. Fullback's got good feet. He's got good balance. He took him in his knees. He bounced off it and kept going. Picks up four, but it's going to be second and goal at the five. 7.20 to go, third quarter. 3 nothing Milliken, but the big blue threatens. Well, first half they had the ball in the same position, and we were able to hold them and keep them to a field goal, so let's hope we can do the same here. Johnson comes in motion. Handoff to Olsen, hit behind the line of scrimmage, and down he goes. 
Kalyak There's in our there, stud Murphy Bayon. in there, and also Tom Cunningham. All three of them got to Kirby just as he got the football. You know, I believe in that same series back here in the last side. Be like come from that quick side off and it made contact with him in the backfield to help stop that drive up again. Loss of two on the play. It's going to be third down and goal. Yeah, let's see if they're going to come out here with that quick look in pass again. Well, third down and goal at the seven yard line. Han goes right. Here's this number 18. I like to throw that to him. Neil goes left. Andre. Oh, that's a fade. It's the, the fade. fade. Out of okay. the hands of Neal, he didn't catch it. Great defense by Andre Murphy. Not and thrown that well. Fourth down and goal. That's the end zone fade pass that they tried to hit, set the receiver and set for the corner, but he didn't throw it that well. If he would have made the turn, at just a perfect timing pass when it's, and it's very difficult to stop when it's thrown properly. So the field goal attempt is going to be from the. 14-yard line, a 24-yard attempt. And the Crusaders may get out of here with only three. Fisher, they set it down, the kick is up, blocked, oh, blocked. Picked up by the Crusaders. Go. Damn the deal. 20, 25, oh, 30, and out of bounds at about the 36 or right. 37. What a block Doug Holock put on the defender, number 12. That is Tyler Wilkin brought everybody up in the press box. I mean, Holock just destroyed him. The ball was picked up by Ronnie Sazone, and he carries it all the way out to the 40 or 38 yard line, first and 10 Crusaders. There's another outstanding defensive effort. As I pointed out in the first half, we were in the same situation, held them to three points. This time, not only did we down to give them three points, but we got the ball back near the 40 yard line in good field position. First and ten for the Crusaders. Let's see if they can take advantage this time. Well, that block by Holock was something. <laughs> yes. Uh, I know you like it that. It sprung him on the side. Like, well, Doug is another one. He's uh, he's like uh, Shane Snyder. Browder on the option. Pitches to Ozzy. Ozzy down the sideline, the 45. Knocked away from him, but he goes out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Make that the 47 yard line, a pickup of about uh, nine, maybe 10. They're gonna give them the 48. It's gonna be close to the first down. Sometime your wide receivers, they don't like to throw those blocks that much, but Doug, he not only threw it, but he threw it with enthusiasm. Did a peel back on him and took him down. Well, you don't always get a good shot at a numbers. guy like that. That's right. <laughs> get him on a, he has no choice but to try to come through you. 6 0, 3 to go, third quarter. 3 to nothing, Milliken, as this thing's starting to heat up just a little bit. Crusaders with a blocked field goal attempt. That's three times they've Milliken's been down there and they've come away with a field goal. They hit bad snap on one, made the second, and then the block. It's going to be a two inches short. Second down and inches at the 48-yard line for the Crusaders. We get the Crusaders to get a drive going to get a touchdown in this ball game. It could be a deciding factor. And they'll be looking at those goal line stands down in there. With deep regret. Tom Horn on the sideline talking to Michael Tolbert. We're going to send him in with the play. Well, second and inches. This might be a good time to fake that ball up in there and pull it back and go for one. Oh, Bart Starr used to like to throw deep oh, on plays right. like this, didn't he? Fake that belly, fake Taylor up in that offside and pull it back and go for McAfee. Not McAfee, I'm back at the bear. McGee. Now. I'm McGee, McGee or yeah. Dowler. McGee. <laughs> I know who you were talking about. I'm the old bear man. You can tell that. <laughs> Second down and just inches for the Crusaders up at the 48-yard line, just short of the 48. The center just gave you the first down as soon as he moved the ball. <laughs> Straight ahead, Trevor Bell, first down across the 50 to the 47, picks up five and a first down. So first and 10 for the Crusaders at the Milliken 40 seven yard line. Well, we still have the win for about six minutes. Clock moving. Crusaders come to the line of scrimmage. First down and ten. Isaac Young and Trevor Bell in the backfield. You got Fanolio and Holick out wide to the left side as Browder looks over the defense. Nick Spins gives it off to the fullback, oh, no. and the ball is loose. Trevor Bell never grabbed it. He didn't know he had the football. 
Nick tried to give it to the fullback, and I don't think Bell ever knew he had it. He just kept running, and the ball was on his hip. Fumble gives it back to Milliken, and again, the Crusaders have shot themselves in the foot. The old cliche, turnovers are murder. They're bad enough in a wide open ball game, but in a close ball game like this, they can become disastrous. Well, you wonder, Coach, how long can your defense keep holding them out? Right. Uh, they keep giving them breaks. you got to do something offensively. First and 10 at the 47 for Milliken. The high backfield, wide men to both sides. Spins it around, gives it off to Kirby, and the big fullback doesn't get much. He gets maybe two or three. And again, they try to go straight up the middle, and that's just not been there all day. Unofficially, 75 yards on 19 carries for the big fullback. A 5'10", 200-pound junior. By far the leading rusher in the ballgame. Oh, yeah. LeJean Scott has done almost nothing here today as the Crusaders have really controlled him. Cole goes back again to the fullback. Again, it's straight ahead for two. That's going to be third down and five. Well, both teams still trying to make something happen in the middle of the field. Third down and five at the 48-yard line. Four and a half minutes of the clock moving, third quarter. Milliken still on top, 3 nothing. John Scott and Brad Kirby, the running backs. Go straight back, wants to throw. throw. Cole stands get in it, there it, under it, pressure. All right, we got him. got him from behind. Paylock got him from the back again. All right, big play. Big play for John Paylock. A loss all the way back to the 45-yard line. A loss of seven. It's going to be fourth down and 12 at the 45-yard line as the Crusaders again. The defense has done the job. All right, John is beginning to earn his name as Stud now. He's made two big plays on crucial <laughs> times for us. He's one of your favorites, I can tell. <laughs> Three and a half minutes to go in the quarter as Dolkowski goes back to kick it. Ozzie stands at about the 17. There's the snap. The kick away, and they just about got there. Ozzie on the hustle. Got to get away. Ooh, what about the take bounce. for Milliken? Inside the 10 and down at about the six-yard mm. line. What a great break for Milliken. Ozzie was trying to get there to make the catch, realized finally that he wasn't going to make it, so he backed off. The ball took a Milliken bounce all the way down to about the six. And they're going to make it at the eight-yard line where it's going to be first and ten for the Crusaders. You know, if you on a, on a punt return, if you could get a person back there that could catch the ball, no matter where it is on the field, and never get one return yard, you'd be about ahead of the ball game by 50 yards every ball game. They could just catch every punt without ever making a yard return. First and 10 at the 8-yard line for the Crusaders as Prouder brings them up. He's got wide outs to the left, Tolbert and Fanolio. He's going to throw. He rolls. He's in trouble. Down he goes at about the three, maybe the four-yard line. The Browder sacked all the way back. Let's see where they're going to spot it at the four-yard line. A loss of four, make it second down and 14. So they rolled the dice, and it didn't work. Well, Nick has not had a good afternoon as far as being able to get outside. Well, and we have to give a lot of credit to the uh, Big Blue of Milliken. They've right. been playing a very outstanding defensive ball game. They have really They've been on there putting pressure on them all the time. It's going to be second down, 14, back at the four-yard line. Browder rolls, gives it the pitch go, to pitch Ozzie, trying to get outside, catch it back in at the five, and down he goes. Now flags go down. I thought I heard somebody say there was a flag. I don't see it. I don't, see it. I don't either. That's a marker. Oh, that's a marker, that's right. That's not a flag. Pick up of a yard on the play. It's going to be third and 13. At the five-yard line. Well, we need an outstanding punt. 
Well, it goes out wide to the but left not side. Till next down. I was going to say, let's play this one yeah. first. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a play. Let's go here. Browder sets him in the eye. Nick goes back, pitches to Ozzie, trying to get around the corner. He's got right, some room. He's to the 10, to the 12. Going to be short of the first down, but going to give him some room. And now a flag, and maybe a late oh, hit. Oh, bad A news. real late hit, I believe. Break for the, I think a break for the Crusaders here. Number 36 came across there. I don't believe that. Personal foul, Milliken. Number foul. 30, oh. 36, Sheldon now Davis. This. That play was way, way over what that's, he was doing then. I that's don't know one of thinking. the mental errors we talk about that drive a defensive coordinator up the wall. I mean, that was way after the play. Just no. Well, Sheldon he's Davis. He's going out of the ball game. Yeah, he is, and he's probably going to get a little talking to you, think? Yeah, I think he'll say, <laughs> young man, why oh. didst thou? All the way to the 27, where it's going to be first down and 10 for the Crusaders. A big break here. Let's see if they can take advantage with a minute 25 to go, third quarter. They're still talking to him over there. That could be the break. <laughs> Browder looks over the defense. And moves Ozzie to the wing on the left side. Nick marks out the signals and rolls left. He's got room to run. Pulls it down to the 30, 35, and out of All bounds right. at about the 40-yard line. Nick Browder with a big gain and another first down for the Crusaders. First time today he's been able to find his way to the outside. Big black on the outside by Henrik coming back over there too. Our wide receivers are doing a pretty good job out there on the block. One of right the uh, one of the big blue is uh, down across the way on the sideline. I think that's the block that Henrik put on him. Yeah. It's going to be a first down. Crusaders out at the 39-yard line. Nick Browder with a 12-yard pickup. By far his biggest run of the day, and the first time they've really been able to get him to the right. outside. Well, we did. Well, over on the sideline, he's still no. laying there. They're trying to. Uh, what we need to do is keep our thing in the game. We we've stopped ourselves several times with our own mental error so far, and that's costly. Well, the Crusaders have, as you said, Coach. They have. They have uh, had some problems. They've had some plays, but every time it seems like they get a drive going, uh, a penalty or uh, a missed assignment, something like that seems we, to happen. A couple of times we started ourselves. We're in the second and two, second and one situation, and we've ended up back in the thing because of our own errors. Well, let's see if we can get it going this time. As still, they have the uh, got a player, the Millican player down across the way. You can see him laying there as they minister to him and. I'm not sure he knows what state he's in right now, let alone what town. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, he's up on his feet. That's number 54. That's uh, Todd Harris, the defensive tackle. Only a 215 pounder. You start getting pounder. suspicious when you say he heard a flock of flamingos fly over. <laughs> First and 10, Crusaders up at the 39-yard line. Here comes Tolbert in with the play from the sideline. <laughs> Well, let's see if uh, Valparaiso can get it going. Both teams came in 1-0 and on the season. As Browder brings him to the line of scrimmage. Browder goes back, wants to throw, stands in, fires it out here for Tolbert just over his outstretched hands. Good defense that time by Mike Bruce. And it goes incomplete. Milliken yet to give up a point this year. They won their first ball game against Franklin 25 to nothing, and they lead here 3 nothing. They haven't scored a lot, but they uh, haven't given up any. No. We haven't been in, uh, we haven't established a scoring threat yet all ball game, have we? No. We haven't been down. Not serious. We haven't been inside the 20, have we? I don't think so. All right. Second down and 10 at the 39-yard line. Browder to Trevor Bell off the left side. Breaks a tackle, breaks another, and jerks forward to about the 42. He's only going to get about three yards after all the work. He kept bouncing it outside. It bounced off one man, bounced off two men, and they finally brought him down on a three-yard gain. Third down and seven at the 42. Officials are meeting again over there. I'm not sure what they're meeting about now, trying to decide if it's inbounds or out of bounds, I guess. I don't know. Henry comes into the ball game. Now they wind the clock. 
Not sure why he had to come to the middle of the field to know that. <laughs> Third down and seven out at the 42. Holyock and Henrik out wide left to the right side. Ozzie the wing on the right. Browder rolls right. He's got a lot of back pressure side, from the back, back side. side. Fires it out here. Got yeah. him. Holick. Holick. Right nice the catch. 47 yard line, and Nick got rid of it just in time. Big That's time pressure coming from the back side, and he just got rid of the football. That's where he liked to think his instinct. Boy, that guy had him in his. He had him right in his sights, right between those scapulas. Right, first and 10, 11 yard pickup. Doug Holock with his first catch of the day. And it's first and 10 at the 47, just inside the 48 yard line as the third quarter winds down. We may not get a playoff. And that's it. Oh. Third quarter is over. After three, it's Milliken three, Valparaiso nothing. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. During any business day, you have to make hundreds of decisions, answer countless phone calls, attend too many meetings, and solve each crisis that spells the end of the world. So isn't it nice to know when you need expert temporary help, you don't have to worry. Just call America's employer, Express Personnel Services. Request the skills you're looking for. Let us handle all the details so you can spend your time doing more important things. Indiana 105 is your local Northwest Indiana radio station with local Northwest Indiana news and local Northwest Indiana weather, including exclusive up-to-the-minute color radar reports. Indiana 105 has Jim and Chris in the morning, Phil King in the afternoons, and Steve Witt in the evenings. And we play the best country music in Northwest Indiana. We're your number one country music station, Indiana 105. 15 minutes to go in this one. Three nothing Milligan. First and 10 at the 47 for Valparaiso. Browder to Nick Bell. 45, okay. 40, go, the go, 35 go. down to the 33. Now, that's what Bell did last year. We started getting something going off the thing. We can get a couple more of those going, then we can look to the outside with Ozzy again. Pick up a 14 on the play. Bell up to 38 yards now. Nine carries. Only had five on one carry in the first half. First and 10 at the 33. This may be the farthest that the Crusaders have penetrated today. As I look over the play-by-play -play sheet. They were at the 35 once, but I think this is the farthest they have been. Right. Twins left. Router on the option to the right side. Got a oh, no, we got a flag down. Another down first down. And we're going to get probably a and holding. Probably a holding. Oh, we got two players down. Mark Elijah and Kevin McHale, the right guard and right tackle, tackle. out there. Looks like they collided. And a hold going to be called against the Crusaders as Browder oh, got some room to the again. outside. And it looks like all of a sudden with Bell being able to run it upside, yep. inside, they're able to get it to the outside once in a while. And we cut our throat. <laughs> so the hold will move it back oh. 10. It's going to be first down and 20 back at the 43-yard line. So first and 20 at the 43 for the Crusaders. 14, 26 to go. Makes a difference of over 25 yards in field position. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they only credit you with a 10-yard penalty, but there's 15 right. more. You ought to tack on here because of the run. That's right. First and 20 at the 43. Tolbert wide left, Holick wide left. Holick goes in motion. Browder goes straight back. Once... Throws it out here. He's got Ozzy inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. So Ozzy Young with the catch takes it out of bounds at about the 38. Picks up about five on the play. It's going to be second down and 15. Pretty good play when you got that long to go, Coach. No, no sense trying to get it all in one play if you no. don't have it. We got, <clears throat> we got lots of downs to go here. Second down, 15 at the 38-yard line. We've got to go with the quick passing because we haven't had a lot of time to throw the football, so you've got to go with that two quick, three-step quick drop. Hollick comes in motion. 
Browder goes straight back to throw. Stands in, fires, wants to go deep to Holick and just overthrew him. Just overthrown as Holick uh, got tied up, it looked like, and couldn't quite get clear as quickly as he'd like to have. So third down. They have a little problem today. He's always looking to the inside, and the ball's going to be thrown to the outside. It seems to be causing us a little bit of problem there with Doug. Got to be looking over that outside shoulder. Third down and 15 at the 38 yard line. Tolbert and Henrik come out wide to the left side. Ozzy the wing on the right. Well, let's see if Nick can get something going. Ozzy now comes over on the left side. And Milliken's confused. They're going to call a timeout. So there's timeout with 14 13 to go in the ball game. It's Milliken 3, Valparaiso nothing. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. If you're like most business people, you just don't have the time to plan and implement your advertising and marketing plan as you should. That's where advertising, marketing, and promotions can help. For less than the expense of a part-time employee, you can take advantage of over 24 years of advertising and marketing experience. It costs nothing to talk it over. Call Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions at 477-5803 for an appointment. That's Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions, 477-5803. In our hands rests the ability to lift those who have fallen, to comfort those who are troubled, to guide those who could be lost. It is the greatest power we hold, and there is no greater way to make it felt than through your united way, working harder than ever to make a lasting impact in the lives of the needy and in the hopes of your entire community. Please support your united way. 14-13 to go in the ball game. 3-0, Milliken on top. The Crusaders, Milliken, I think I counted on only 10 players out there, Coach. They maybe had to make a timeout because they didn't have enough people. A third down and 15 at the 38. A big, big third down play in this ball game for Valparaiso. Things starting to get a little bit late. We're going to see draw our screen. Uh, maybe a little screen out here to Ozzy. Well, let's see. Browder sets him down, goes straight back, rolls right. Nope. He's got trouble. A guy coming from behind, I think, got to him just as he started to throw the football. And it goes down, and it's going to be fourth down and 15. At the 38, and Browder having Browder trouble getting down. up. Finally does bounce He's up, down. but he really got blasted from the backside. They've been coming off that backside all day. So Cupke's going to come on to kick. The ball at the 38-yard line. With 14.07 to go in the ball game. There's the snap. Kupke kicks it away. Could Trying be good. To, Could be good. Going to take a good bounce for good the Crusaders bounce. inside good the bounce. five yes. for the three and down right there. Excellent job. Excellent job. Well, the Crusaders had a 12 play drive and came up with nothing, nothing, but they have pinned them back at the three. Now it's up to the defense to keep them there. So Bob Canny right there. You see Bob talking to his defense. They got to do the job. And here's where you got to really here's come up big. Mail. Here's where we got to make a stop so we can gain good field position. Out. It's imperative here. Well, let's see. Are they going to run that fullback up the gut again, or are they... Is he going to have some guts and surprise us as he did in the first half and come out and throw the football? First Even though he's back in the thing. First and ten at the, the three-yard three line. line. Cole gives it off oh, the ball. No, fumble, fumble the football. Valparaiso's got it at the ball. ball. There it is. There's a turnover will make a difference in the ball game. Crusaders have it first All right. and goal at the one-yard line. Now, shove it in. Shane Snyder Boy, comes big, up with a big, big one. one. He's coming on a blitz. Big first, play by Shane. First and goal. They're going to mark it at the two-yard line. Oh, my goodness. That's the first time we've been inside the 30-yard line with the football. Well, you need breaks in a ball game like right. this, and There's this is the biggest turnover. break you're going to have. Whoa. Nick Brown well, you got to punch this baby in. You see the scoreboard. That's where we stand right now. 
All right. 13. You know that big go. blue's going to be in the gap defense now. What are they doing? Okay, on the nose, tied up the middle, linebacker with his snoot right in the hole. Router. There's Trevor Bell, fullback, oh. straight ahead, might have got a yard. He could have slid off. He got one yard. We had good initial contact. It looked like he might have been able to slide that off to the left side. So it's going to be second down and goal at the one-yard line for the Crusaders. How are they going to spot it? Oh, we got it spotted. Uh, one even inside the one-yard line. Well, the Crusaders, yeah. their biggest opportunity of the day, a big, big turnover down at the two-yard line. Now it's second down and goal. Uh, Clock moving, 13-25. Here they come to the line of scrimmage. Bell is 33, Young is 23. Oh, we missed him! What? Bell went to the right, Browder went oh. to the left. So Browder had to keep the football and he's gonna be thrown for a loss. Let's see, back to the two yard line. Only lost a yard, it's gonna be third and goal. We've had enough mental mistakes here to last us for the rest of the season. <laughs> you sure you're not still on the sideline? <laughs> ah, oh, this is well, those guys really hurt, don't they? I feel you. You better believe it. I'll tell you. A dive play and one back goes the wrong way. I'll tell you. Well, I don't know which one would turn the wrong way, but one of them obviously did. Here they go again. Third down and goal at the two. Router spins. Roll, oh, naked, naked boot. Throws. Wide yes, open. all right. But a flag is down. They push off. A flag is down. Let's see what they're going to call. Whether they're going to call it. They're going to call be a against push Hullick. off against Holick and the wide receiver. He came down off. to make contact. They'll call him pushing off. Offensive pass interference. Right. Oh my goodness. Oh. What is going on out here? Offensive pass interference against Doug Holuck. Yeah. So the touchdown does not count. That's going to move him back. Well, the referee coming over to talk to uh, Tom Horn, I guess. Try to figure offensive pass interference, right? It's a loss of downs. And a loss of downs. Yeah. Well, no, it's still third down. It's already third. So still going to be third and goal. But it's going to put the ball all the way out to the 17-yard line, a 15-yard penalty. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm dying. Well, you got a uh, you got a back go the wrong way on uh, second down, and then an offensive pass interference when you had the touchdown. We on literally third. have committed suicide here today with our own mental errors. They haven't stopped us. We're stopping ourselves. Henrik out wide to the left. Holick out wide to the right. Shotgun. Snap back to Browder. Stands in. Nick fires for Holick. Throws it behind him. Incomplete. Loaded. Well, now what? You're going to be kicking into the wind if you go for the field goal. Great I believe that's Tony what they're Edmonds. going to do. Great pressure from their tackle, Tony Edmonds. They feel that's their best defensive ball player in the line. 32. Tom Evans is going to come in to do the kicking. So we got a new kicker this week, Tom Evans. It's going to be a 35-yard field goal. Into the win. Snap is down. The kick is up. It is good. Is it good. Yeah, he got it. High ball game. Just barely, but he got it in. So there's timeout on the field. 12-14 to go in the ball game. The score now is Milliken three, Valparaiso three. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. Have you visited downtown Valparaiso lately? You'll find a great selection of unique products and services available. Everything from hiking and outdoor equipment to scuba gear, men's clothing to stylish women's fashions, comfortable footwear for the sportsman to delicious food and drink at our many restaurants. In short, just about everything you need is in downtown Valparaiso. Visit us soon. This invitation from the Downtown Valparaiso Business Association. Come visit us in downtown Valparaiso. You'll be glad you did. 
Of the thousands of investments available today, some of the most exciting are right here in the Midwest. Where do you get research and advice on them? Many Wall Street firms overlook these corporations. But Robert W. Baird & Company has an international reputation for research, and Baird closely tracks these and 300 other corporations, publishing their recommendations in timely research reports. For more information on what Baird Research can do for you, call Baird in Valparaiso at 464-4906. Baird, better results from better research. 12 minutes, 14 seconds to go in the ball game. We're tied at three. Crusaders blew a great opportunity there for a touchdown, but they got the field goal as Evans was able to make it. Just barely got it over the crossbar into that win, but he got it, and that's all that counts. He approaches the football. There's the kick, a line drive. Neal will pick it up at about the 17 to the 20, 25 to the 30. That's Olisov. He's the 35 and down at about the 39-yard line. Nice return. So first and 10 for Milliken at the 39-yard line. Not a big offensive display like we expected, but an exciting college football game. We got just the opposite of what we were looking for, a great defensive ball game. They both made outstanding goal line, def goal line plays. Well, 12 minutes, 7 seconds left in the ball game with the Crusaders and uh, the Big Blue tied at 3. Cole sets them down the eye backfield, gives it off to Kirby. He's hit right in the hole and pushed back. Tom Cunningham on top. Who's on well, the bottom there, I don't I think believe. he made it back to the line of scrimmage. Cunningham and I believe Matt Culp might have been the two that got him. I know Cunningham was on top. No gain on the play. It's going to be second down and ten. So second down, ten yards to go for the Millican Big Blue at the 39-yard line. Seymour taking a defensive signal. Kirby and Scott. LeJean Scott is yet to get loose today for the Big Blue. Ooh, goes back once the throw. Flags sides. are down and incomplete. Had his receiver open. That was Andy Franks, and Franks couldn't come up with it, but a flag is down. I believe somebody moved too quick. The right, uh, right tight end jumped across the line of scrimmage too fast. So legal motion against Milliken. When they're throwing to him. Tom no Horn saying, no, don't take it. We don't want it. Make it third down. That's right. Third and 10 is a lot better than second and 15 at this stage. So they're going to decline the penalty. It's going to be third down and 10 back at the 39-yard line. So the Crusaders want to put them out on right now and get the ball back. 11 minutes and 23 seconds to go in the ball game. The tight end who jumped offside was the primary receiver on the play, and he was anxious to get that ball. Not Too sure what the, uh, what the holdup is here. Official back uh, referee talking to the uh, quarterback, and I'm not sure what that was about either. They're coming out to huddle, and he just started the clock. Neal out wide left, Johnson out wide to the right side. High formation with Kirby and Scott. They flip-flop the tight end. Andy Franks comes over to the right side now. Cole goes back as a the Scott. Go. Nothing there. Nothing. Tried to come on the draw, and Valparaiso would have none of it. John Palyak in there, Matt Culp in there. And Bernie came through, make it, making him originally and, jump. And Jeff Seymour's in there also. Right. So they had four of them around him, and Scott and is were, thrown for a loss of a yard. It's fourth and 11. Got early penetration. Scott, I have, with 11 yards on seven carries today, and uh, they have really controlled him. He had a big game against Valparaiso last year. So fourth down, 11 yards to go. Oh, they rolled a bad snap. snap. Oh, the kick is away. Away. Just got it away. He a high one kick. Of his best punts. Ozzie calls a fair catch, then gets away from it. And it's going to be down by Milliken, down at about the... 24-yard line, and that's where the Crusaders will take it over first down and 10. I believe that's his best punt of the ball game. Well, he got it to turn over a little bit that time. He didn't just go up right. there and float. He was rushed. He had to move, and as soon as he moved, he was fair game, too. First down and 10 at the 24-yard line for the Crusaders with 10 and a half to go in the ball game. Well, right now is when you want one of those sustained 15-play touchdown drives. That happens so often in the punt. <laughs> When the punter 
drops the ball and he gets it. He gets a little extra shot of adrenaline when he knows he becomes free game back there. The guys are coming out there after him then. Well, pitch outside to Young. Young tries to juke one man and he's caught and dropped behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of two. So it's going to be second down and 12 at the 22 yard line for the Crusaders. Young goes back to Bell Ozzie, and said, why'd you give it to me? Yeah, Ozzie held his hands up and said, hey, man, he's sitting in my face. <laughs> Nothing I can do out here. No one's going to get there first, the defender of the ball. That's it. Henrik in with the play from the sideline for the Crusaders. We're tied at three. Next week, the Crusaders against Kalamazoo. We'll have that for you here on cable TV. Browder barks out his signals, goes back, wants to throw it. He is stormed oh, under. Nothing. Boy, somebody whipped him right at the line of scrimmage. Number 77, Tony Edmonds, came straight up the middle, and nobody touched That's him. That's the second big play Tony Edmonds has made in the passing situation here. He he got back there as fast as Browder did. Lost to the 19, a loss of three. It's going to be third down and 15. Well, the Crusaders' young offensive line has had their problems today holding Milliken out. Lyon, the only senior in that defensive line. Jacob Adams, a sophomore. Uh, John Kreider, the center, is a sophomore. He's replacing Fitzgerald, who got hurt earlier. Elijah, the junior. Uh, Michaela, junior. But they didn't play that much last year. Shotgun. Browder wants to throw. He's under a lot of pressure. Now he breaks it to the outside. He's got some room if he can get a block. Browder cuts it over the 30, and he oh. trips over a man as he steps over him. Had a lot of room. He stepped over number 11, Darren Eubanks, and tripped over him. Going to be close to the first yes. down. Let's see where they're going to mark it out to about the 33-yard line. A 14-yard pickup is going to be fourth down and a yard, and he had the first down if he had to trip. Oh, that's right. So they're going so to have to go into punt formation as Kepke goes back. Neil will be standing at about the 35. The Ooh. kick is blocked. Man came in uh, unblocked. Milliken recovers and goes out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. The man came untouched from the right-hand side. A short, short blocker to come over went to the right side, and uh, the man from the right side came in untouched. And his first shot down and, at the punter. First down and 10 at the 21-yard line for the Big Blue. 8.20 to go in the ball game, tied at three. Did a good job on it too. Too many times people coming in a block jump up in an effort to try to block the ball and the ball goes underneath him. That time he stayed on a flat plane and was able to block it. Good technique. Cole sets him down. A big break for the blue. Throws out here for Neal and it bounces in front of him incomplete. So that's going to be second down and 10. At the 21. We certainly have been generous to each other to give the teams an opportunity to score down there. Well, but both teams have had their share of mistakes that have uh, cost them in this ball game. Han goes out wide to the left, out wide to the right comes Neal. Ponce's the fullback, and Scott is the tailback. Cole straight ahead to Ponce, and there's nothing there. He didn't have much more luck than Kirby's been having. Well, I'm sure that Milliken coach has to be thinking right now with not establishing anything right now that he wants to keep us keep definitely keep his hands on the ball and be sure that he and on third on fourth down he has an opportunity for a field goal. I'm gonna say he's got the wind behind the him. Wind so he's, back, thinking, right. he's thinking, you know, we at least have the wind behind us if we try the field goal, although gotta, they have muffed two of the three they've had. They had one blocked and a uh, bad snap on the other. So it may not be a sure thing the way it's looked in their kicking game so far today. Cole sets him down at the 19, goes throw. back, wants to throw, fires it for there Johnson, the off his oh. hands and incomplete. He had him open and Johnson just didn't catch it. So it's going to be fourth down and eight at the 19. Apparently he was trying to get to the inside because it's twice now I've seen receivers coming in the end zone when that ball is going to be thrown on the outside shoulder and he's looking to the inside. He had to make the turn back out, that's why he missed the pass. So fourth down and eight, and they're going to go for it. They're not going for the field goal. I told you they didn't trust that uh, okay. field goal unit. Big, big fourth down play right here for both ball clubs. 
defense. Cole goes straight back, wants to throw, stands, and fires, looking, and he got him. Got this There's receiver that about in about the eight yard line. Number 95, Josh Hahn. That's about the fourth one. They've completed on that to stop and keep the drive going. He's just straight down the field and look in. First and goal at the seven yard line for Milliken. Well, yeah, we've done an outstanding job inside the 10 yard line all day. No reason to think we won't do it again. First and goal at the seven. Ponce, the fullback, hit right at the line of scrimmage. Moves the pile as he gets it down to about the four yard line. So Ponce uh, picks up about three. That time, that was a great offensive surge from that uh, blue line that time. They came off the ball and moved our line back that time. Clock moving with 6.55 to go in the ball game. Second down and goal, just inside the four. Malin back in, Culp comes out, a little more bulk in the middle of that line. Crusaders need to come up with another break. Man goes in motion as Han. Cole, Ponce, back again. his yeah, mother, big hit. right at the three-yard line, got a yard, third and goal. Yeah. 98. Mark Moline, the guy who made the hit. Yeah, he came across with a big hit down there. Third down and goal at the three, and Valparaiso wants a timeout, so we'll take a break. 6-10 to 6-12 to go in the ballgame. Milliken 3, Valparaiso 3. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. As an auto owner's insurance agent, I take your needs seriously and work hard to find you the best coverage available. As an independent agent, I'm able to provide you with the policies and coverage best suited to your individual needs. You see, auto owners select agents the same way you do with a great deal of care. For the best coverage at reasonable rates, call your independent auto owner's agent today. Call your auto owner's agent, Harley Snyder Insurance, with offices in Valparaiso, Chesterton, and Porter. Put a sock in it. That's right, put a sock in it. As you head back to school this fall, the weather's bound to cool off. So if you want to keep wearing your comfortable Birkenstocks, take our advice. Put a sock in it. Birkenstock, the comfort shoe, available at the sports shop, 60 Lincoln Way in Valparaiso. Birkenstock in six different styles and an assortment of colors sure to please. The Sports Shop, 60 Lincoln Way, downtown Valparaiso. Third down and goal, three yard line, 6-12 to go in the ball game and another big defensive series for the Valparaiso Crusaders. And it seems like, Coach, we've been down here doing this all day, doesn't it? Yes, we have. And up to this time, we've been very fortunate in coming away with only three points. Third down and goal at the three. Full house backfield. They go with Scott, and he's not going anywhere. Another uh, great defensive job. stand. Pollock, Seymour. Are they going to go field goal now? They're coming in, Shane they? Snyder in there. 27 is... Uh, Scott Latsky in there. Well, they were all there. No gain on the play. It's going to be fourth down and goal, and I would guess they've got to go for a field goal, don't they? Yep, here we go. It's going to be Fisher Quarterback's trying the field holding. goal. Quarterback's holding, just in case. A 20-yard field goal attempt, apparently. It's down. The kick is up, and it is good. He got it. So there's timeout on the field now with 5.26 to go in the ball game. And Milliken has taken the lead. The score, Milliken 6, Valparaiso 3. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. The Purdue Christmas Show, Branson, Missouri, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the Mall of America, the Holland Tulip Festival. Just a few of the attractions visited by Getaway Tours. Getaway Tours is the only touring company in Northwest Indiana that is a registered member of the National Tour Association. So if you're a member of a group that might be interested in an escorted tour for a week or just a day, have Getaway Tours take care of all the details. 
Call Getaway Tours at 477-4771. For the collector, for the fan, for birthday gifts, anniversaries, Christmas gifts, or any special occasion, it's the Foul Ball. Larry and Kathy Astrologies invite you to visit. Whether your sport is football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, the Foul Ball has cards, memorabilia, and unique gift ideas. Remember, the Foul Ball, 51 Jefferson, Valparaiso. Five twenty-six to go in the ball game. Milliken six, Valparaiso three. We need a big run back right here. Ozzy stands at about the three-yard line. As they get ready to kick it off, it's going to be Olasov. It appears to kick. Approaches the football straight on kicker line, drive it down the middle. It's going to be. Taken across the 25, the 30, the 35 yard line for the Crusaders, Noel DeBona. So it'll be first down at 10, pretty good field position, but they certainly didn't want Ozzy to get it on that kickoff. We're, we have time in the ball game, 520 left. And if we can make one drive for the ball game, this is it, because one drive with a touchdown could be the difference in the ball game today. Browder putting one drive together. Browder brings him up. Fanolio goes wide left. Holick goes wide right. Ozzy's going to be the wing on the right side. Trevor Bell's the fullback. Browder goes straight back. Once the throw stands in, looks out here, fires. He's got Jackson for a short gain up to about the 36 yard line. Uh. Well, he got a yard on it. It's going to be second down and nine. That's a tight end shoot for a one-yard game. That was defense well, because they actually end up with a trips formation over there, and they bought both receivers coming back to the inside, hit the tight end, and try to shoot him out, but he never got clear of the line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah. Bullock comes out wide to the left side. Wide to the right side is Henrik. The eye backfield with Bell and Young. Browder rolls, he's oh, caught, he's, he's dropped. Brought down. Number eight coming in there to make the big play. Well, he's not on the roster. I don't think we have an eight. Yes, we do. Highland, Joe Highland, a freshman. linebacker freshman, makes the play back at the 30-yard line, a loss of six, third down 15. What he's done is brought some fresh people in to rush for the pass, and it's being effective for him right now. 4.06 to go in the ball game. Clock moving. Crusaders trailing by three, 6 3. Holick comes in motion. Browder goes back. A lot of pressure. Stands in. Fires it out here for Holick. Wide got open. Him. Got it oh, at the 50 yard line. A great Whoa, catch. Oh, that's too bad. A great catch by Doug Holock, and it's too bad he couldn't have yeah, could thrown it on time because Holock had a lot of room to run. If he could have caught that in stride, he had the sideline to go down. First and wow. 10 at the 50-yard line. Now we got the first down. That was a big third and long play. Boy, if Nick had thrown that one on stride, Holick might have scored because he was wide open down that sideline, but he made a great catch out of it. It's first and 10 at the 50-yard line. Tolbert wide left. Hendrick wide to the right. Router. Gives it all, kept on the option, cuts it up this time, has got some room to the 45, fumble, the football fell on it at the 43. On. We got about an eight yard gain. Picked up seven, make it second down three at the 43 yard line. Uh, they may give him the 42, let's see, yeah, they're gonna give him the 43, pick up a seven, second down and three. 3.10 three to go in the ball game, the Crusaders trying to make it happen finally here at the end. Holick wide to the left. Fanolio wide left. Fanolio yet to make a catch today. Browder. Spins. Bell straight ahead. Nothing there. Might got a half a yard if he got that much. So it's going to be third down and three. And the Crusaders are going to call the timeout with 2.45 to go in the ball game and Milliken were leading by the score of six to three over the Crusaders. 
Coach, uh, you talked about you got to have one drive for the touchdown to win your ball game. You got 245. You got a third and three. What are we going to do here? We got plenty of time to do it. I think right now he's going to try to go to the outside. They're not going to get up inside at all. It's time for a quick toss to Ozzy back to the short side of the field. Make sure we got the split end out here, and he can get us our three yards. Well, you know, a lot of people are going to say that uh, this was not a good football game because there haven't been a lot of points, but these two teams really overall have played pretty well, especially defensively. The defensive coaches have got to be very happy with what their team's done today. Defensively, but unfortunately, both teams have made some mental errors that have been crucial to them right now that have really hurt us in this ball game. Too many times we've ended up, you know, with, like I say, we get a first and ten or we get a second and three situation and we end up with third and 15 every time. And it's been nothing. They put a lot of pressure up in our passing game today. They have, uh, we have not been able to throw the ball. I imagine our rushing average will probably be show a minus something simply from the losses that we've taken in our passing game. Well, we're ready to go. Out wide to the right side goes Holuck and Henrik. The I formation backfield with Bell and Young. Somebody about to fall down that ladder, I think. Browder on the option. Wants to pitch. Now does to Ozzy. Flag goes down. We might have a face mask. Ozzy's going to be that's... stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. But I think somebody That'll might have grabbed Nick Browder's face mask. face mask. I believe somebody we grabbed Browder's it. face mask. I'm not sure. Let's see. That's what I thought I saw. Tom Horn's looking on. He wants yeah. to... He wants it that way. Face mask, there it is. Now see, there's oh, another can you one. believe that? There's, see, we've made ours, they've made theirs. There's a mental error that gives us a first down. Well, I thought I saw that just before he pitched the ball that Browder's face mask was grabbed inadvertently. Now, that's a, a spot foul, I believe, isn't it? That doesn't come from where the run ended. No. Which should it give should the Crusaders first down, a first down. Wait. Well, I call for the well, quick they're toss to go the from, side, and he came with the option. Well, they're going to go from the line of scrimmage. The face mask penalty makes it first down. Valparaiso at the 38-yard line, so the Crusaders catch another break, now, and it's he, about time they took took advantage of one of them. I call for the quick toss. Tom called for the option because he knew that they were going to grab Router's face mask if we get the first down that way. Nice call, Tom. Yeah, it's why he's down there. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10 at the 38. Browder needs to come up with something for the Crusaders. He rolls right. He's got some time this time. Fires the Niners. Got a man open. Holick, oh. and he missed him. One of the few times today, Nick's had some time to throw it, and he missed Holick. So it's second down and 10 at the 38. Nick hasn't been real sharp today. He's been behind or ahead of the receiver. 2.14 to go in the ball game. Next week, it's Kalamazoo, and we'll have that for you. Same day, same time on your uh, cable channel. Whether you're watching us on Multimedia's Channel 23 or U.S. Cable Channel 16. Well, we know we're in four-down situation. Oh, yeah. 2.14 to go in the ballgame. Second down 10 at the 38-yard line. Browder straight back. Wants to run oh, now. No, he's, uh, no, he's still got it. Ducks out of there. Now fires. Got a man wide oh, open. Jackson yes. at the 30. The 25. The 20. But a flag is down. Flag back at the 35-yard oh, line. Got it. We've got him. Nick Browner I'll made a great, great play, field, but I'll, I'll bet, bet you the lineman got a field. Right. Yep. Anytime you see it take that long, you're usually going to have somebody downfield, and that's what they got. Oh, my goodness. Well, this has certainly been a day of big breaks, of hard, heartaches up and down, I'll tell you. Nick Browner does what he does best, and that's escape. Makes a great play to Jackson, but it's going to come back. On the ineligible receiver downfield. This and so it's going to be. has been one of just constant uh, mistakes by one team or the other. And it'll move it to the 43, where it's going to be second down and 15 as we go inside. Two minutes to go in the ball game. Oh, my goodness. It's been two or three times they've stopped us and get called for an unnecessary penalty, face mask penalty. Yep. We make the play and get ourselves stopped with a penalty. Yeah, both teams have had it today. Browder sets them down. Rolls right. Stands in, fires out. He's got a man open. He's got Holak at the 35-yard line. Doug Holak oh, with the catch. A great pick up catch of eight. on the ground. 
So Hallock picks up eight, and it's going to be third down and seven at the 35. We've got two downs to make it. A minute 20 to go in the ball game. Still they go without time. a huddle. Tom Horn signals the play in from the sideline. Manolio wide to the right side. Holak wide to the left side. Ozzie, the wing on the left. Browder calls the play, goes straight I'm back, coming. fires quickly to Manolio, oh. and it's too high. Had him on the slant, just threw it up too high, and it's going to be fourth down. Well, you throw him on that inside route on the slant, and they're going to put a tattoo on your back. So fourth down and seven from the 35, a minute four to go. This is your ball game right here for Valparaiso. You don't make this play, this thing is over, and Milliken wants to talk it over defensively. They're going to call a timeout with a minute four to go in the ball game. Six to three, Milliken on top. And the Crusaders, you would figure, have to go up on top with it, but uh, maybe not. They'll be either going to have to go up on top or come up here with them to our screen. We haven't done much of that all ball game. Well, you got a minute four to go, Coach. Uh, you're back on the sideline. What are you going to come up with to make this work? I think we're going to throw the ball. I got to get something to put Brown. <clears throat> we're not getting good pressure, so we got to take him outside with Nick. Before he got an option pass or run, I think, on this situation. We've got to spin him to the outside because we're not getting them. If they come and put us any heat inside, they put several sacks in us. So we've got to go roll out to the outside. We'll try to get more pressure and give him an option or pass or run. I saw Doug Holak uh, signaling to the sideline. He wants to go on a streak. <laughs> he said, throw it to me. I'll go deep and I'll catch it. And he's been known to do that in the past. He's, uh, he's one of the better receivers around. But, uh, uh, that first home ball game against St. Ambrose, he made an outstanding catch in the end zone there. Right. It was an alley-oop, and he just went up and took it away from two defenders on either side of him. A minute four to go in the ball game as Browder comes back to the huddle for the Crusaders, and we're down to this, fourth down and seven at the 35-yard line. Crusaders trailing 6-3. Neither team's been able to get in the end zone. There have been three field goals is all we've had in this ball game. To the wide side of the field to the left. I would like to see that ball on the other hash mark. That's right. Okay, we've got a trips out here right now. Three receivers to the left side. Oh, now you got four receivers to the left side. You got Bell and Young both and there, and so Nick Browder's going to be back there all formation. by himself. Oh, right, we got he the rolls left. There they are. Oh, nobody rolls touched. left. Watch there the we throw. got the time. Fire. There he's he got goes. Wide open. Got he it. Caught it. Outstanding line. catch by Holock. Holock at the six. Another diving 55 catch. 55 seconds to go in the ball game. There's another one. If he leads him and he hits him, it's a touchdown. Wide, wide open was Doug Holock. Wide got open. A... He had to make the dive to make the catch. Otherwise, that's a touchdown if he hits him in stride. First down and goal for the Crusaders inside the seventh. Nick Browder brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Got plenty of time, 40 seconds to go in the ball game. Browder goes back, rolls right. Got pressure. In chase, fire. Touchdown. Touchdown. Doug Holak for the touchdown. Doug Holak has made the, that's about the fourth cap he's made off his shoe tops, diving into the ground. The Crusaders have taken all day to get here, 59 minutes and 46 or 36 seconds, but here they are. Now, in the end zone, that's a, that's a good pass to throw low because the receiver comes back to the ball, diving low, and there's no way for the defensive back to defend that. Nine to six. Crusaders with the lead. Evans on to try the extra point. Shahid, the hold, puts it down. The kick is up, and it's oh, no good no block. Kick. Well, it picked oh, up by the Crusaders. Evans runs. The ball is loose, still on the ground. <laughs> it's going to be no good, and we're going to have no good. 34 seconds to go in the ball game when we come with the kickoff. The score now is Valparaiso 9, Milliken 6. This one isn't over. Who was You're the lineman watching. that made a great play and lateral the ball back to the kicker there? I didn't, I didn't get, get the, the number, number. Yeah. no, it went so fast, I didn't see the number either. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader Football. During any business day, you have to make hundreds of decisions, answer countless phone calls, attend too many meetings, and solve each crisis that spells the end of the world. So isn't it nice to know when you need expert temporary help, you don't have to worry. Just call America's employer, Express Personnel Services. Request the skills you're looking for. 
Let us handle all the details so you can spend your time doing more important things. Indiana 105 is your local Northwest Indiana radio station with local Northwest Indiana news and local Northwest Indiana weather, including exclusive up-to-the-minute color radar reports. Indiana 105 has Jim and Chris in the morning, Phil King in the afternoons, and Steve Witt in the evenings. And we play the best country music in Northwest Indiana. We're your number one country music station, Indiana 105. 34 seconds to go in the ball game, 9 to 6. Valparaiso on top. They finally made it happen. Doug Holak with two big catches. Nick Browder with two good passes, and the last one was a classic low and outside for the touchdown. Evans approaches the kickoff. Here's the kick. Got a good one into the wind. Great kick. Got oh, about the five. Picked up at the six, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. 25. Stuff it, stuff it, Still stuff on the it. outside. Gets it across the 35 to the 36, and that's where Milliken will have 27 seconds to go. So many times you see that, that the ball guy drops the kick, and it seems like it just perhaps that 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 contain unit coming down slows up a second and then you get a return on the football. Well, Bob Canney's defensive units played a win of a ball game. They need to stop it right here. Can't let anything deep happen. 27 seconds, all that's left. He's got wide outs to both sides. I think Milliken has his timeouts left. Cole going straight back. Doug. Fires it out here. Dropped. Neal caught it and dropped it. Incomplete pass stops the clock. Second down and 10 at the 36-yard line. 22 seconds ago. Well, the Crusaders, you got to give them credit. It's been a gutty effort. Their offense has not worked all day, but when they had to have it, they made it happen. Now they're hanging on to a 9-6 lead with only 22 seconds to go in the ball game. Dick Harlan and Bill Cook, hope you're enjoying it. Make, we're getting some fresh people in the line, so we try to get a pass rush on. Second down Three and ten. Well, we're doing the opposite. Cole goes there we straight go. Come on, come on. It's pressure. There Fires it, it out here deep oh, for Neal. He's got him. And Neal is out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. 15 seconds to go. A 33-yard strike. First and ten. Milliken at the Valparaiso 31. And best of all for them, not only the yardage coach, but he got out of bounds, stops the clock with 15 seconds. Well-thrown football. Well, Tom Horn and his staff going crazy on the sideline right now. Boy, the butterflies are flitting around. Out to Neal, and he made the catch, but he stays in bounds at about the 26-yard line. Six seconds, five seconds. Now they're going to stop the clock with four seconds to go, and Milliken calls their last time out. They're going to have time enough for one play. They're going to make a mile. At the 26-yard line, a five-yard pickup. It's going to be second down and five at the 26. No field goal. That just ties the, ties the ball game, so they got to go for it. Well, it's a choice you got to make as a coach. Do you go for the field goal? No, they're two out gonna... of four in opportunities. No. Or... Do you go for the win and try to get it in the end zone? Got to go for the win, get it in the end zone. Well, that's what the coaches across the way are going to decide. Carl Polker, who uh, played at Milliken and graduated in 1968, gets to make that decision across the way. The Crusaders trying to hang on. They lead at 9-6. We have four seconds to go in the ball game. Hope you've enjoyed it because it's been maybe not the most smoothly played game in the world, but it's been fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bob Kenny and uh, Tom Horn both talking to the defense right now. Shane Snyder there, number 13. Also, uh, number six, Josh Burning. That's Bob one that the fans this. haven't gone home from. No, nope, they're not. They're still here. The, uh, Sitting here, and you're standing on the sideline. Most of the, the people on both sides are on their feet. Last year, it was a close ball game. Nobody went home because it was a high scoring ball game decided by two points. And this year, just the opposite. It's a low-scoring ball game. It's going to be decided They're going to try the points. field goal. It's going to be a 44-yard field, field Remember, goal Remember, 12, attempt. the holder is a quarterback. It could be a fake. Chuck Fisher is going to try the field goal, but the Crusaders decide we're going to call a timeout and try to freeze him. Fisher, a 5'10", 175-pound senior. If he makes it, we have a tie ball game. So remember, Milliken apparently has decided to go for the tie, not the win, unless it's a fake. Remember, yeah, the, re, the holder for it is their, first, is their quarterback, so it could be a rollout and throw the ball, too. I mean, the potential is there because they've got their passer as the holder. 
Well, just four seconds to go. And, well, i got to believe. I don't know. that. watch uh, the outside men and see if they hit and release quickly. You hate to see. It's one of those games where the defenses both deserve to win. But one of the teams on offense is going to get it done. Valparaiso with the only touchdown in the ball game. That came with 34 seconds to go on a pass to Doug Holak. And the Crusaders lead it 9-6. to six With just four seconds to go in the ball game. So it is going to be... Valpo has to make up their mind. Do they go to, to block the kick or do they stay back and say... Well, the now they're going to go for it. Half. They've yeah, changed right. their mind. They're going to go for right. the win. We got trips. I think the kids talked him out of it. Cole, straight back. back. Oh, we throw. got pressure, pressure on him. The back side. Got him from the back side. Knocked All down right. from behind. Tom Cunningham, and yeah. the game is over. The Crusaders win it. Tom Cunningham from the back side made the big play. The fumble was recovered by the Crusaders, but that is academic. And All the Crusaders over. have won. Oh, glory. <laughs> what a beauty. Well, I tell you, that backside's been open all day. Both quarterbacks should have a tattoo plaster between their shoulder blades. We'll be back to take a look at how it happened and wrap it up. The final score once again, the Valparaiso Crusaders 9, Millican 6. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. If you're like most business people, you just don't have the time to plan and implement your advertising and marketing plan as you should. That's where advertising, marketing, and promotions can help. For less than the expense of a part-time employee, you can take advantage of over 24 years of advertising and marketing experience. It costs nothing to talk it over. Call Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions at 477-5803 for an appointment. That's Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions, 477-5803. In our hands rests the ability to lift those who have fallen, to comfort those who are troubled, to guide those who could be lost. It is the greatest power we hold, and there is no greater way to make it felt than through your united way, working harder than ever to make a lasting impact in the lives of the needy and in the hopes of your entire community. Please support your united way. Well, back we are. The Valparaiso Crusaders defeat the Millican Big Blue by the score of 9-6. to six. Dick Harnell along with Bill Cook, former head coach here at Valparaiso University. And coach, I thought you were back on the sidelines this afternoon. That was an exciting football game. That was an exciting football game. And I'll tell you one thing, when we go inside, Doug Hollick is going to be familiar with his shoelaces because <laughs> he was down there all day catching that football on this last drive. Well, you could see Holak. We were talking about it. I mentioned it that I saw Holak motioning to the sideline let me go get it and uh, that's the play they came up with two in a row for the touchdown that ended up winning the ball game uh, 34 seconds before the Crusaders finally did it but you called it when they got the ball you said one drive for the ball game and they came up with it they came up with the big drive at the right time I tell you we got by today making a lot of mistakes if we can learn from this it's going to help us out quite a bit but both teams made some mental errors that really penalties at severe times when they had made the big play and then came back and gave it to the other team well, we enjoyed having you with us as a coach, and we'll see you next week when it's Kalamazoo, and we'll do it all over again. We'll be looking forward to it. I hope they wash the windows. <laughs> Final score once again, the Valparaiso Crusaders 9, Millican Big Blue 6. Hope you'll join us next week for the game against the Kalamazoo. We'll have it for you right here on cable TV. Our game is presented today by Harley Snyder Insurance, the Sports Shop, the Foul Ball, Getaway Tours, Express Personnel Services. R.W. Baird & Company, the Downtown Valparaiso Business Association, Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions, and the United Way. Till next time, this is Dick Harlan for Bill Cook, wishing you a very pleasant good day, everybody. Have you visited downtown Valparaiso lately? 
you'll find a great selection of unique products and services available. Everything from hiking and outdoor equipment to scuba gear, men's clothing to stylish women's fashions, comfortable footwear for the sportsmen to delicious food and drink at our many restaurants. In short, just about everything you need is in downtown Valparaiso. Visit us soon. This invitation from the Downtown Valparaiso Business Association. Come visit us in downtown Valparaiso. You'll be glad you did. Of the thousands of investments available today, some of the most exciting are right here in the Midwest. Where do you get research and advice on them? Many Wall Street firms overlook these corporations. But Robert W. Baird & Company has an international reputation for research, and Baird closely tracks these and 300 other corporations, publishing their recommendations in timely research reports. For more information on what Baird Research can do for you, call Baird in Valparaiso at 464-4906. Baird. Better results from better research.